The sound of the rooster means it's game time in San Jose as we get ready for the earliest start ever for a major college football game. A tailgate breakfast, time to rise and shine for early morning football. Good morning from San Jose. It is just after 9 a.m. local time, so let's play football. Boise State riding the longest winning streak in the country, 19 straight victories and counting, taking on San Jose in a whack football game. It's a beautiful day in California, and Boise State unbeaten so far this season. They haven't lost a whack game in over two years, and they are confident as they try to get in and bust up the BCS party. Good morning and welcome to beautiful San Jose. Pam Ward along with Mike Tomzak. Tomzak, it's just after 9 a.m. You haven't played. These guys haven't played this early in a very long time. Oh, yeah. My brothers and friends in the neighborhood would gather on Saturday morning in the sandlot, in the backyard, just to play football. And then you would go home and watch your favorite college team. If these guys really love the game, they'll get up with no hesitation whatsoever. Uh, both teams are excited to be playing, obviously, on national television. And for Boise State, a very exciting season as they try to grab one of those BCS bids. Well, certainly. No matter where they stand the BCS standings, this team is well coached. You know, great fundamentals, great leadership, and they have a coach that believes in this. And I think the nation should take note how powerful this offense is today. And defensively, they're, they're stout. And they are 10th in the BCS standings right now. Let's go down now to the third member of our team, Dave Ryan. All right, Pat, thanks so much. It's a known fact, isn't it? College kids hate getting up early. Really no choice, though, for San Jose State or Boise State on this game today. 9 o'clock local kickoff. Dan Hawk is the head coach of Boise. Had his kids get up early up in Idaho. Mountain time, 5 a.m. all week long. He reports no problem. This morning, each team got up very early. A few minutes of extra sleep for San Jose State. A walkthrough is put in there for Boise State. Each team had a hearty breakfast before the game today and heading over to the stadium. Fitz Hill, San Jose State's coach, said, hey, remember back to your Pee Wee days and Pop Warner, 8, 9 years old? You got up early then and played. You can do it now, right? He says that his team is very excited. We talked to the offensive coordinators yesterday as well, Barry Lunny and Charlie Roach. He said he thought some of those kids would be looking at the alarm clock and uh, be ready to go around 4 a.m. But we are ready to go at 9.02 a.m. local time. And John Broussard, who ran a kickoff back for a touchdown last week, a flag is down, but Broussard, with another fine return, takes it out past the 35. But this one looks like it's coming back. Not only a flag in the field, Pam, a couple of shoes. That grass a little wet this morning. Those cleats aren't digging in. Paul Labine is our referee from this WAC crew, and indeed Broussard's run back will come back. That's not a way to start your morning, Pam. When you get a nice return by Broussard, you got one of those inadvertent holding calls. Block in the back. Number five on the return team. Five-yard penalty. I'm happy this is the go. First down. So the block in the back, and that backs them up to the 11-yard line. San Jose State gets the ball first. It took three colleges and up until his senior year, but Dale Rogers is finally a starting quarterback, solidifying his starting role. He threw for five touchdowns off the bench in that wild 70-63 to win over Rice a few weeks ago. And that was 70-63, to Mike, in regulation. That wasn't even overtime. No, they put out a good offensive performance there. In fact, a record-setting performance, most points ever scored in a regulation game. Rodgers, his first pass of the day, lifts it over the middle. He has a man, but Tyson Thompson, their top running back, unable to catch up to it. In fact, the sun is in his face at this time. Boise State coaches say that Tyson Thompson, number seven, is as talented a back as they've seen this year. The junior college transfer has three 100-yard games this season on the ground, including a whopping 203 against Hawaii. And the Spartans offensive line, very inexperienced, even more so today. John Booker, a true freshman, his first collegiate start at left guard. Chad Barrett broke his ankle last week against Nevada. And so they go with the young man, Booker. Second and 10 for the Spartans. Rogers trips, gets his feet, and completes the pass just past the line of scrimmage to Rufus Skillern, who is his leading receiver. That's his 28th catch of the season. Austin Smith with the stop. Defensive coordinator Ron Collins says that Alex Guerrero and Andrew Browning in the middle are really the cornerstones of his team's success. Julius Roberts has three sacks at his end spot. 
And Andy Avalos, number 40, overlooked by many schools because of his small stature, but he more than makes up for it with his talent and heart. Gabe Franklin, the fastest player on the team, and Gerald Alexander from Rancho Cucamonga, California, also in that defensive backfield. That's up near Pasadena, Rancho Cucamonga, or down from where we are. Rogers trying to do it on his feet, and he runs for the first down. Corey Hall, the middle linebacker, makes a stop, but Rogers is able to pick up 12 yards. Yeah, Dale Rogers, I mean, my heart goes out to him. He has a torn meniscus in his knee. He's playing on guts and heart right now. And for him to get that first down, it's so important to get that drive going to first. He get the next set of downs and try to get into a flow early in the game. He's a good scrambler, but as you mentioned, he's been playing with that torn meniscus. He's going to need surgery after the season. So he is one tough guy. And now he is going to change up the play with four receivers. Blake Clark did not get it off. Well, it's important to get that third down conversion. You can't come back and have a delay a game penalty. It's not, not solid football. Dead ball. Delay a game on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Three play first down. Second penalty already against San Jose State. Dr. Fitz Hill in his fourth season now at San Jose State, just 14 and 30. But uh, we had talked to him yesterday and talked about the other progress that his players are making off the field. The graduation rate is up. The retention rate is up, and uh, he's really working towards some uh, pretty high goals here at San Jose State. First and 15 for the Spartans. Rogers with time, flings it out again to Skillern, his second catch of the day, and he picks up about eight yards on that play. Dan Hawkins has done a terrific job at Boise State, taking over for his former head coach there. He was on the staff of Dirk Cutter, who moved down to Arizona State. He's won 87% of his games there. And this team leading the nation in scoring now three of the last four years. And, and Mike, what a fabulous job that as he continues, really, Boise State has been a solid football program for many seasons. We're consistent on both sides of the football. Second and six, the pitch goes back to Thompson. And there you see some of that splash. And he should have the first down. Austin Smith, a true freshman from San Bernardino, California, makes a stop. But Thompson gets seven. So Tyson Thompson is going to be the guy all day that has to get things done for San Jose. He tried something early, the first play of the game, to get him down the field. But he needs to get 20 to 25 touches, not only in the running game, but in the passing game. You saw the numbers from Boise State. Number one team in the country and stopping the run, but this Tyson Thompson, he's a player. In fact, they only give up just over 64 yards per game on the ground. They're also number one in the WAC total defense, number one in the country in rushing. D. Thompson gets out in space and he takes off. Tyson Thompson scores and the Spartans strike first. Well, we just talked about it, Pam. Tyson Thompson not only in the running game, but the passing game. What happened, they set it up. He ran a little wheel route. The corner got caught inside. We saw speed going down the sideline. Coaches told us that he can go a distance, and he impressed us going down that left sideline. When he was in high school, he ran a 10.3, 100-meter dash. That is his first career touchdown catch, and it goes for 69 yards. And the Spartans won the toss, elected to receive, and they score a touchdown. Jeff Carr for the extra point. And Boise State has fallen behind San Jose 7 to nothing. They wanted to get the ball into Tyson Thompson's hands to take advantage of his speed, and it worked out. 69 yards later, and the Spartans lead Boise State. Tyson Thompson has scored on a 69-yard pass play, actually his second career passing touchdown. He caught a 54-yarder against Rice earlier this year. So now Thompson has five touchdowns this season that have gone for at least 40 yards. Two of them through the air. Boise State gets it for the first time. Mark Anabakun gets around, turns the corner and is finally driven out just short of the 30-yard line by Jeff Carpenter. Well, let's go back to this recent touchdown here by Tyson Thompson. Running back here, look at the corner here, Alexander on the right side. He gets caught looking inside. They haven't run this play all year. 
Offensive coaches have told us once they get the ball in Tyson Thompson's hands, he is gone. He heard the rooster crow this morning, Pam, <laughs> and he got in the end zone. Thompson certainly ready to go early. First year starter Jared Zabransky has done a brilliant job replacing record setting quarterback Ryan Dinwiddie at Boise State. They actually found him. He, he ran the old wing tee in high school and they found him because he came to a Boise State camp. Well, that's what happens usually in college, Pam, is they try to get these guys that they're recruiting at a high level, get them in the camp, see them one-on-one. Number 84, Kinley's all set. And then maybe offer them a scholarship based on their ability. So many times guys come from different programs, there's the product of the program. But you get guys in different environments where they control the football on a consistent basis and coach be there, then they have a different vantage point of the guy can play at the next level or not. Here's a nice formation to start the game. Dan Hawkins and his uh, offense coordinator Chris Peterson certainly known for their innovations on offense as flags come flying before Boise State can even get its very first playoff this afternoon. But like you talked about, Pam, Terry Zabransky, he's a guy that's last Ball couple of weeks has really come into his own from an accuracy standpoint, and they can put up the numbers. Down. There's so many guys that, that are, if you're eligible on that offense, you're going to catch the football at some point. In fact, 16 different Broncos have carried the ball this year. 18 different Broncos have caught a pass. They do spread the ball around. And on the very first play, they give it to Lee Marks. They're very good running back, listed at five foot seven. Sean McNamara chases him out of bounds, but he picked up six yards. Lee Marks, you just saw him with the football, came to Boise State as a cornerback, but dazzled coaches with his running ability. He has had a pair of 100-yard games this season. And on their line, Darren College is from North Pole, Alaska, and is one of the best tackles in the country. He is only a junior, and he was quite a find for Boise State. As Marks picks his way through the middle of the San Jose defense, picks up about four more. San Jose State giving up a whopping 423 yards a game. Tony Ficklin, though, is a bright spot. Former fullback leading the team with five sacks. Former walk-on Ezekiel Staples is the top tackler. And another flag is down as Marks gets the football and is stopped in his tracks. But maybe the early start, we've had uh, quite a few penalty flags already. making sure we get all the numbers right and situation on the field. They call out your number this year when you do something wrong. Defense. Not for mom and dad to Five hear your name, but First down. the infraction, it helps. Helps the coaches out. Let's take a look now at the rest of that San Jose State defense. You see that they use the five defensive backs. Josh Powell is moving from free safety to strong safety today. And that long pass play is complete to Dryson James. James, a guy they like to get behind people in the secondary, and it worked that time for 37 yards. Well, we've seen Boise State come out here, no huddle, forcing the tempo. San Jose State is on their heels right now because they're so explosive on offense. Like we talked about, Pam, 16 different players have caught a pass, but when you move the ball like this, you don't really have to huddle. San Jose State has decided to take a timeout after that long pass completion to Dryson James, who was second on the team both at catches and receiving yards this season. Boise State is unbeaten, but San Jose State striking first in California. ESPN 2's College Football Saturday, brought to you by Aflac. Ask about it at work. And Hummer. Check out the H2 at Hummer.com. Hummer, like nothing else. We are back in San Jose, California. San Jose State on top of Boise State, 7-0, but the Spartans are driving. First down now on the 22. Lee Marks runs into one of his own guys and then slips away. And Marks is somehow able to pick up six yards on that play. Well, he's got a lot of balance, a lot of spins. What San Jose's defense, they call timeout. They called timeout last play because they weren't adjusting to the no huddle offense. But he just does a nice job keeping his vision, keeping his feet. Looks like he's got the long cleats today, Pam, for this dew on the grass. Sparks first came here. He practiced at cornerback for two years, and then they switched him over as another flag comes in behind the play. Ryan Nunez coming up with the stop on 
Marks and a hold against Boise. Well, I might as well get it out early, Pam. I don't like holding calls on running plays. <laughs> that gets me a little upset up here. So the San Jose holding State defense. On the offense, number 70. 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay second down. Boise State is unbeaten on the season, 8-0, but you see that they have just rolled over people at home, but on the road, they have struggled just a little bit, winning by under 10 points a game. And they've only played two games on the road so far. In their last road game against Tulsa, they took it down to the last three seconds of the game to win it. Won that one 45-42. They also won at UTEP 47-31 this year. And that's what San Jose knows. They know they don't play well on the road. And defensively, Coach Burns, we have nothing to lose. We're going to go ahead and attack them, bring blitzes from everywhere. But the penetration is the key against this Boise State offense. If the defensive line for San Jose can get penetration, they're going to have a chance to upset this running game. Keith Burns is his first year as the defensive coordinator. He is the fourth defensive coordinator in as many years since Fitz Hill took over as the head coach. He took a year off after leaving Tulsa as the head coach. Reunited with Fitz. They both worked together at Arkansas. Third and seven for Boise State. And another flag is down. So a very sloppy start to this early game. Delay game. And a delay. That's what San Jose go has going for them. You know, two penalties in consecutive plays. Backs them up even further for a third down situation. Puts the Bransky in a position where, you know, he's in good field position. They have an opportunity to maybe create a three-point score here. But just be safe with the football. These guys are explosive. They average just under 40 points a game. It's just a matter of time before they do explode. Third and 12 now for Boise State. Tops in the country averaging 47.2 per points per game and trying to score on the very first possession. A little play action. Zabransky, time, flicks it, and completes it to T.J. Akery. Akery, the leading receiver for Boise State, and it's going to be a first and goal. So they convert on that third and long for 21 yards. Now that's a backbreaker right there. You get in a good situation defensively, but Zabransky goes through his read progression. He reads deep to short. He had a guy underneath there. He went downtown with T.J. Akery, who's a nice receiver. This guy has, he's, he's such an overachiever, number 89, T.J. Akery. And he and Zabransky are always on the same page. In fact, Akery walked on to this team, and now as their leading receiver, he's had a pair of 100-yard games through the air. So first and goal for Boise State. Zabransky can take off and run, and he runs into a little bit of a, a blue wall there on the two-yard line. It looked like he had a, a clear path, but Matt Costello did a good job. Number 33, Josh Powell, is a defender that the uh, San Jose State coaches love. Here's what Zabraski has to look at. Nobody open downfield. Here comes that Spartan sandwich. It's that Spartan breakfast sandwich early in the morning. Zabraski might think twice next time. That's a good job by Matt Costello, a true freshman from right here in San Jose. Number 35 coming in to get the first look on Zabraski. Handing it off to John Helmendaller. And Helmendaller is in the end zone for the touchdown. So Boise State tried to shoot themselves in the foot a couple of times with penalties, but still the high-powered Broncos able to get in and score the touchdown. Well, it's such a power running game. It's a power O to the right-hand side. Helmendaller, who's usually a fullback, he's a goal line guy that gets in there, pad level. Got him into the end zone. 5'11", 220-pound redshirt freshman from Eagle, Idaho, as Tyler Jones, the Boise native, is in to try to tie this up. A flag is down yet again as he misses it. And we think San Jose State was offsides. You know, it's amazing, Pam, that one point, as we talk about, will come back to haunt you at some point in time, but when you have the defense offside, Offside. Give another defense. opportunity to tie it up. Number nine. Penalty is half the difference to go. We'll reach out the down. So Tyler Jones will get a second opportunity to tie this game up. And with that touchdown, San Jose's defense now, in six of their nine games this year, the opponent has scored a touchdown on their very first drive of the game. 
not a good way to get it started. Well, that's what Coach Hill talked about. He said offensively, we're operating pretty consistently, but defensively, that we need to grow up in a heartbeat. Yeah, we're consistent in the bad way. Yeah. Tyler Jones, who rarely misses extra points, gets a second chance, and he makes it. And that's his first one he's missed all year, but it was a penalty, so it's nullified. Take, take it away. So Hellman Dollar takes it in for six. Boise State tied up San Jose at seven. Um, will Rogers ch challenge Leonard as the Pac-10's best QB? Can a puma challenge a lion for the throne of the jungle? Uh, yeah? No. no. ESPN College Game Day, built by the Home Depot, Saturdays at 10. Have you been arrested for a serious criminal offense? Do you need an experienced, aggressive attorney to help you? When I was faced with a situation that required legal representation, I called Phillips & Associates. My attorney was experienced, aggressive, and truly cared for me as a person. I would recommend Phillips & Associates to anyone. Do you need an experienced attorney to represent you in court? Little or no money down to start your DUI or criminal case. Call right now, 602-258-8888. These two do-it-yourselfers rely on DIYNet.com to get things done. And thanks to high-speed internet service, Beth is finished with one project and on to the next. While Brian's slow dial-up downloads, there's Beth exploring thousands of DIY projects in seconds. So she's done before Brian even starts. Put the power of DIYNet.com to work for you with high-speed internet service. difference. John Helmendahler scoring the touchdown from three yards out. It was a big 38-yard pass to Bryson James on that drive. They covered 70 yards in just over three and a half minutes and uh, overcame quite a few penalties did Boise State to tie this game up at seven apiece. Well, that's a sign of a good football team, Pam. When you face some adversity through penalty, you come back and respond on third down. Tyler Jones with the kickoff, and again, the very dangerous John Broussard, but unable to bring it in. Let's have our first visit today with Matt Weiner. Good morning, Pam, and Taco Bell takes us to Morgantown, where in all likelihood a BCS bid is up for grabs between Boston College and West Virginia. Paul Peterson to L.B. Whitworth, the freshman's first career touchdown catch, puts B.C. on top 7-0 on the road. Temple at home is on the board. The Owls up 7-0 on Syracuse, looking for the Oranges' sixth win. All right, Matt, good morning to you guys back east. And boy, I tell you, L.V. Whitworth back, Andre Callender uh, healthy. They got those two running backs healthy today for B.C. Could be an upset in Morgantown as Broussard loses a couple. Let's go down to Dave Ryan. All right, Pam, thanks a lot. As Boise State scored on their first drive of the game, you mentioned it six times this year now. San Jose State, to its opponent, has given up a touchdown on the very first drive of the game twice this year. It's happened on the first two drives of the game. They've given up touchdowns. So on this bench, you've seen some long faces for the Spartans, and their coaches told us yesterday how critical a good start would be. An early score by Tyson Thompson was big. Giving up that early touchdown could hurt a very young, inexperienced team. See how they bounce back. Keith Burns, again, is the uh, defensive coordinator, and he was enthusiastic in our meeting yesterday looking forward to this challenge as Dale Rogers showing that he can do some nifty stuff with his feet and the San Jose faithful won a late hit but they're not going to get it Cam Hall one of those forcing him out of bounds nine yards on the carry for Rogers and there's take a look and see if it was indeed a late hit we got to protect the quarterback I mean you know the back judge is right there. He's standing. Definitely was a late hit. I mean, you got these officials know that this quarterback isn't as mobile because of his injury to his knee. But I tell you, Dale Rogers, Pam, playing on heart and guts, as the coaches told us. It was Julius Roberts who nudged him out of bounds, and a new quarterback is in. That is Adam Trafalis. And he is able to go forward for the first down. And we expected to see both quarterbacks today. They, I, and uh, Tefralis in, picks up the first down, and he is going to stay in. Uh, he's the more mobile quarterback. And you know, obviously the option's a big part when you get a mobile quarterback in a game. 
and he's had some snaps this year. This is by design for San Jose State. Coach Hill wants to get him in the game because he can do some things with his feet that Rodgers cannot do. He's played in the last four games now, and they say he's uh, becoming calmer as things go around, which you would expect from a redshirt freshman. On the roll, flag down. Kapralis dives forward. Ball is down at the 35. Austin Smith making the stop to get another penalty marker. Kapralis actually started the season opener against Stanford and also started against Rice as the uh, flag is against the Spartans. Started against Rice, went 0 for 6, and uh, Rodgers came in and relieved them down 34 to 7, and they end up winning at 70 to 63, and the job, the starting job at least, has been Rodgers ever since. Number 63 offense, 10-yard penalty, free play, first down. I think they got the uh, true freshman, John Booker, starting at left guard as Rodgers has checked back in now at quarterback. This has been very uncommon, you know, for college football. Some programs do have that platooning of quarterbacks, but, you know, at this stage of the season, whatever it takes to win. First and 20 after the holding call. Here comes the blitz, and down goes Rodgers in the arms of Colt Brooks and Austin Smith. Wow, that was just pure speed, and Rodgers really had no chance. Well, Brooks and Smith came on the right side. They're going to bring heat from the right side up here. You got to throw a side adjustment. You don't have enough blockers to protect the quarterback. And where it lies is the receiver. It puts the onus on the quarterback and the receiver. I don't think Rodgers was focused enough to expect those two blitzers coming from that right side. Colt Brooks picking up his second sack of the season. And San Jose State going backwards now, second and 28. Brooks is a first-year starter at linebacker. has been a special team standout. It's interesting, Pam. You look at San Jose State with the scoring the first drive that puts Boise State in a position where they got to respond, but Boise State's defense is so much better when they get out of the box quick and just let the defense hang loose and bring all the heat they want. Second and 28, Rogers going to pass. A little screen, and that one is snuffed out. Thompson is taken down immediately by Gerald Alexander. Maybe a yard. Welcome to the earliest start ever in the history of Division 1A football. We kicked off at 9.02 a.m. local time in San Jose. Boise State tied up with San Jose State. Tyson Thompson scoring on a 69-yard touchdown pass. John Helmendaler coming back to score for Boise State. And Boise with a 19-game winning streak, longest in the country. 8-0 on the season, and they are 10th in the BCS standings. And uh, with, uh, quite frankly, a lot of help, maybe, maybe, just maybe, they could get a BCS bowl bid, but they're looking to move up in the bowl calendar anyway. And that ball is incomplete. And they were looking for Rufus Skillern. Offense, but defense seems to be the problem. Look at the trouble with uh, Indiana. A good Indiana football team. Indiana taking on Penn State today, and there is the pass and it's picked off picked off by Jarrell Hardy who stepped in front of Jeff Carpenter so they try to use a little misdirection but Hardy not fooled at all comes up with his third pick of the season well defensive coordinator Keith Burns talked about two things win on first down and get turnovers and that's one of the turnovers that they were looking for today but Hardy number 22 playing safety up here he just reads the quarterback he comes off the route reader Picked up the running back going down the sideline. Good ball skills by Hardy. Find the football, releasing his receiver inside to the safety, and making the adjustment on the football. Nice turnover for the San Jose Spartans. Hardy from the Bay Area in Oakland. Zabransky, that is the ninth interception that he has thrown this season against 11 touchdowns, and they want to talk to him about it right away upstairs. So San Jose State gets the football back. Tyson Thompson has already run for one touchdown, and he is bottled up for about a two-yard game. Let's take a look at that pick again. Well, Jarrell Hardy plays corner over here. Watch the nice job he does. Letting that receiver pass him off to the safety, then come off. He's reading the route, turns his head, finds the football. Just nice fundamental work by Hardy, number 22. And Coach Burns talked about it. And then on the other side of the field, you got Dabrowski talking to his coordinators and his coach. You can't do that, son. You can't throw the ball. You got to find the corner, and the corner just made a better play. Chris Peterson, the offensive coordinator, 
Plenty of time. Rogers going up top for Broussard, and it is knocked away at the last instant by Gerald Alexander. Boy, Alexander getting up and just flicking the ball away. But Gerald Alexander does a nice job just playing the ball. You know, watching video this week, number 18 is probably the best cover guy. But he just does a nice job locating the football. His right hand has not even come close to the receiver. That's what this back judge is looking for. Meanwhile, there's a flag back at the line of scrimmage. Holding number 79 on offense. 10-yard penalty, replay, second down. I think they got William Obing on that one. Day 17 of 19 straight days of primetime football continues on... ESPN tonight as Alabama takes on LSU. College football Saturday primetime at 7.45 Eastern time, 4.45 here in California. That game also available in high definition on ESPN HD. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Trafalis is now in at quarterback, and he takes it up about a yard short of the first down. We take you back to Matt Weiner. Hi, Pam. Indiana and Penn State. Hoosiers get the ball on a Penn State turnover, an interception that the option goes to Courtney Roby, and Roby goes 26 yards into the paint. Hoosiers up 7-0. Meanwhile, Michigan on their home field. Haven't lost there in a while, but trailing Northwestern 3-0. Still early in that one. Plenty of time left in the first. All right, Matt, couple really good. And interesting Big Ten matchups right there that uh, here Trafalis, I said it was a yard short of the first time, actually a yard short of the original marker. So it's third and 11, and Trafalis is winging it out there, and he's caught! Rufus Stiller goes in for the Spartan touchdown. Alexander fell down. That's all she wrote. Touchdown, Spartans. what happens, Pam, when you get a quarterback that shows some mobility out of the pocket. Some design runs for Trafalis. But he rolls out to his left-hand side. He's gonna get the, he'll get the protection. And number 80, Skillian, just go ahead, continue his route down the field as Alexander fell down. We just talked about how good ball skills Alexander has. As a corner, you live by the pass and die by the pass, and you're going to make some plays, and you're not going to make some plays, and that was the end result right there. And San Jose State with the lead. Rufus Skillern coming off a career-high day last week against Nevada when he caught six passes for 77 yards. That one, the second longest play of the year for San Jose State. Just let it go. What do they got to lose, Pam? They're two and six. Big plays are going to hurt Boise State's defense. And That's, Skillern just stayed up. About 79 yards on that play equals the longest play from scrimmage that Boise State has allowed all season. And Trafalis, the freshman from San Mateo, gets his second touchdown pass of the season. We got an upset going on right now. This, last year, Boise State beat San Jose 77 to 14 in Boise. And now it's 14 to 7, 7 in favor of the home guys. Well, it's just one guy that fell down. The end result is a big play, and Coach Hill and the Spartans need some big play opportunities. They had penalties that set them back a little bit. They had quarterbacks shuffling in and out with Rodgers and Trafalis. But Trafalis, the guy that just launched at 60 yards in the air, and Skillian did the rest. But Coach Hill talked about it, Pam. It's a mindset. And we were so impressed yesterday with our visit with Coach Hill. Makes you want to play for him. Very positive guy, has, uh, has his doctorate, and uh, one of two head coaches in Division I football to have that. Mike Leach down to Texas Tech also. And that kick goes out of bounds. So, uh, boy, that's a bad mistake, as Boise State now will start from the 35-yard line. Not what you want after you score the go-ahead touchdown. You give Boise State a shorter field to work with. You know, it's kind of we talked about in the open, Pam, the Sandlot game early in the morning on a Saturday. You go out there and shock your opponent. You know, the neighborhood kid's the best kid in the block. And you go ahead and upset him early with big plays. Boise had accepted, elected to have it re-kicked. All right, let's go down to Dave Ryan. Dave. 
Well, Pam, you talked about the incredible academic accomplishments of San Jose coach Fitz Healy. Came back from serving in the Desert Storm military operations, started working on his master's degree, earned that at Northwestern State of Louisiana in student personnel back in 1991. While working his way up the coaching ranks, he wanted to be better himself academically, so he did it from 91 to 97, taking 12 hours of summer classes. Guys, he didn't play golf back then, still doesn't. Nine more hours in the spring semester, eventually earned his Ph.D. in 1997 at Arkansas in higher education. His wife, Cynthia, is going for hers as well, an educational achievement. Very impressive family, and uh, he talks about that the education and, the, and how important it is, and that's one thing he's imparting on his football players. And Boise State, instead of taking the ball to 35, decided to have it kicked again. Quentin Jones, well, they're going to gain about five or six yards because of that decision as we decide to go back to Matt Wyman. Pam, Boston College hasn't won in Morgantown since the inception of the Big East, but making things happen at West Virginia. Dewan Tribble, the punt return, 41 yards, and BC up 14-0 on the road. I tell you, BC up 14 zip. Pretty good football team getting everybody healthy, and, and that's something I'd never seen before on our play here, Michael. You have an opportunity with the penalty flag to get the ball at the 35, and Boise State elected to have San Jose re-kick it. Well, it's nice thing to have the option. When you have the option, you could, you could take it the distance. This team wow. is very confident in their ability both in offense, defense, and the kicking game. They really do have very good special teams as Marks gets the carry again. Boise State 23rd in the nation in kickoff returns, but still Dan Hawkins, and, and if he's an outside-the-box kind of guy. It's definitely Dan Hawkins, one of the, the more interesting coaches you'd ever want to meet. He's well known for, he, he, he has a student of Buddhism and he, and he looks at kind of bigger picture things and, uh, and he's a California guy. So maybe that's a, a little uh, California-ness to his uh, coaching and his philosophy. So taking that penalty or, or refusing the penalty and having to kick again, we should not be surprised. On second and five and getting it on the end around is Lawrence Beatty, the wide receiver. And Beatty's still on his feet. Picks up the first down and then is nudged out of bounds, but he picks up eight yards. And Dan Hawkins known for well, his hawkisms, and this is one of them. He says, bigger isn't better, better is better. Because he has been mentioned for some uh, head coaching jobs at, at other schools and some BCS conferences. And he said, really, you know, what matters is if he's happy and, and if things are progressing well. And he's, he's really big on keeping his staff happy. And one thing he'd like to do at Boise is to get their salaries bumped up. He realizes how important his uh, assistant coaches are. Well, he has good vision. And something happened at UC Davis. He's a disciple of that. Jim Soker was his coach there as Zabransky goes down, picks up a couple of yards. And they've got some good head coaches there. Houston not only lasted a year, then went over to Arkansas. Dirk Cutter really turning things around at Arizona State. And Hawkins bumped up from Cutter's staff to be the top dog. Yeah, we're, what's going to happen here? It's going to be Florida or someone else. <laughs> I don't know, but I'm sure a lot of schools are going to be talking to him because they have such a his credibility is very sound. His players, he brings the players level up. He makes them, you know, they might be overlooked by some schools, but he brings them in here and develops them over a period of time, and they respond. A lot of underclassmen as well. And running for the first down is Marks, as he gets it up to the 35-yard line, picks up 11, and uh, my boy Dan Hawkins, part of that, the bigger isn't better, better is better. His players are like that. He says, we get guys who might be considered a step too slow, maybe a couple of inches too short, but he says, I go out and I get good football players. A lot of programs, as you know, Mike, if you see a 4A or 5-star recruit, 4-star, 5-star recruit, he says, some of those guys can't play football. I get football players. Well, he's a teacher. He develops. He tells them they're good enough times. That Zen philosophy works. It's balance. And it's a belief. Zabransky trying to complete this one up to Acre all over the shoulder, and he almost was able to gather it in. Terrell Hardy step for step on the coverage. Well, Hardy did a nice job in the coverage, and Acre's the type of guy that will always the opportunity to catch the football. He keeps in the field of play, but Acre just dropped it. And one point I want to get to, Pam, in the pregame, we watched Boise State warm up offensively and defensively, and we haven't seen one ball on the ground until then. The more you try to win, the more you don't win. Wow. He said, they don't try, they just go out and do it, right? And they win. Yeah, we are inside a minute here in the first quarter. I'm sure he's got a few thoughts going on in his head right now, down seven points. So what you got to try to do is just play better, get better every game, progress. Zabransky 
good coverage downfield leads to the sack by Kinji Green. Green's first sack of the season. The one thing that San Jose State talked about is matching the ebb and flow of the game. Responding momentum here in the first quarter, winding down. They got the lead right now, and they're playing with a punch. Coach Burns got this defense fired up because the potency on Boise State's side is so powerful. It's just a matter of time, but San Jose believes differently. Kenji Green, a third-year starter, coming up with his first sack of the season. And how about this, America? Boise State, 19-game winning streak. They are trailing San Jose State 14-7 after a quarter. Year after year. And one of those wins this year was against Oregon State. The first time they have ever beaten a Pac-10 team. It's a landmark victory. As that is completed to Acre, and Acre zips into the middle and gets it down to about the 21-yard line. It's another first down. The senior from Pocatello, Idaho, with his second catch of the day. You know, everything is so rhythmic with Boise State. You know, just the linemen cutting, receivers coming back, receivers downfield. I mean, this Acre is like a kangaroo. He just jumps around, spins, keeps on turning. And there's an overachiever right there, people, number 89, T.J. Acre. Originally a walk-on, and he and Zabransky, like you talked about, Pam. Two walk-ons that have been good for this team. Another first down for the Broncos as they try to tie this game up. Hand it off to Antoine Carter, and he is grabbed at the ankles close to the line of scrimmage by Eric Wilson. All right, let's go back to that Aflac trivia question. Which is the last WAC team to start a season at 9-0? Boise State trying to get there with a win today. And the answer? Wyoming back in 1996 started out 9 and 0 and finished up at 10 and 2. Cowboys playing a big game at home today against Utah as Utah tries to be the big BCS buster. That pass complete to Andy Weldon, the tight end. Another first down. Let's go back to Matt Weiner. Hi, Pam. Back to that Penn State Indiana game. Anthony Morelli in at quarterback for the Nittany Lions. Morelli just got picked. Kyle Killian going to house it. The other way, they missed the extra point by, uh, no kidding, 10 yards. Indiana is up 13-7. Wow, so a big turnover. Morelli is that uh, freshman that a lot of people are uh, excited about at uh, Nittany Lion Land. I'd like to see him. Zach Mills has been there. And he's gotten beaten up in his four seasons. Michael Robinson more effective as a receiver. But that one didn't work out so well for Morelli. Antoine Carter. Takes it inside the five, picks up four more yards. You look at Boise State in this series coming out, being down seven points. A lot of misdirection, trying to get Zabr Zabransky out on the perimeter. But they platoon their running backs and receivers. And one thing that this Boise State team, ha team has, Pam, is a lot of role players. You know, guys that get in and out of the lineup for 10 plays, but their role is just to do exactly what's called in the huddle. Yep, the, the coaching staff says what they want to do is define a guy's strength, and then they use him whenever they need him, as you said, to plug him in and get that strength done. Zabransky calls a timeout. Well, he's down on the play clock at three seconds. So they, at least they avoid another penalty. Boise State, about four yards away from potentially tying this game up as they try to keep that 19-game winning streak alive and healthy. ESPN 2's College Football Saturday. Brought to you by Taco Bell. Think outside the bond. And Suzuki. More and more people are making the smart move to Suzuki. Nice look at the San Jose State campus. Palm trees and all. San Jose State with a 14-7 lead, but a second and goal from the four now for the Broncos, who have just called a timeout. Well, Chris Peterson talking to Zabransky in the sideline. Put the ball in the end zone. Got another penalty. That tight end moved a little bit. Wow. Yeah. 14 penalties now in this game. Dead ball. That's the fourth ball false start. 39 on the offense. Five yard penalty. Three plays. Against the Broncos. Ryan Putnam was just put in at tight end and he moved too soon. So now the second and goal goes back to the nine. They've been going backwards all afternoon here in the first half of the game. San Jose just taking taking advantage of it. Keep on pushing them back. Give us more field to defend. Seven penalties apiece. And we still have 
more than half the second quarter left to go. The stem in the front on defense, getting that fair defense. Everyone's covered. Pitched it back. And into the end zone for the touchdown. Yes, touchdown, Quinton Jones. So the penalty ended up not hurting him as Jones scores his third career touchdown, showing his speed, getting around on the perimeter. That's one, one of those plays where he got attacked the weak side of the defense when they get in that over-reduced look by the defensive front. But number 20, Collins just took a bad angle. You gotta get a better pursuit angle and cut off that running back, Carpenter, before he gets in the end zone. Tyler Jones to tie the game up. And Quentin Jones is the kind of guy who's played both receiver and running back. They just want to get the ball into his hands and utilize his speed. And it worked perfectly on that play. Well, certainly, Pam, the Boise secondary is missing Chris Carr, team captain and starting member of the defensive backfield. You said a moment ago, Chris, it's tough to sit there and watch. How hard is it to be on the sideline today? Well, it's, hard. it's really hard, especially when your team's not playing as well as you would like them to play. Yeah. You just want to be out there and you're a team captain. You want to go out there and show them what you can do and help your team hopefully go to a BCS game. Injured collarbone. What's the prognosis? When can you come back? Hopefully in about a week or two. Um, I'll most definitely be back for a bowl game, whatever bowl game that is. So I'm going to get x-rays on Monday and I'll figure out when I can play. Well, the San Jose student section says you guys are overrated. Do you deserve a BCS game if you went out, do you think? Yeah, I think we do. I mean, if you take any of those big schools and put them in our conference, they're going to dominate like we have. And we've shown for the past two or three years that we can dominate and that we are that caliber team. So if we went out, we definitely deserve to be up there. In practice, you've acted a lot, Chris, as a coach when you've been injured with a shoulder problem. What's wrong with your pass defense today? Uh, just a couple of little mistakes. Uh, that's been our problem all year. Our close games have just been little mistakes. Teams really haven't drove on us all game. It was two big, like, 60, 70-yard touchdown passes. So if we just cover out the little things, we should be fine. Hope to see you back soon. Thanks, okay. Chris. Thank you. Chris Carr, not only a very good defensive back, but the best punt returner in the WAC. Personal foul against Boise State, giving the Spartans 15 yards. So first and 10 now from their 40. Penalties continuing to mount up. That's eight against the Broncos, seven against San Jose. Pressure, Rogers steps into the pocket, gets it away, going down, feeling a terrific catch by Tyson Thompson. Gets wow. it on the fingertips and gathers it in. Well, they worked that play, first play of the game this morning, where Tyson Thompson gets through the middle of the field. He's gonna go right up the middle of the field, hashes, got a linebacker, gets collision, but they dropped the coverage. Great pass by Rogers. Great pass by Rod even a better catch by Tyson Thompson. Big plays are hurting this Boise State defense, as Chris Carr attributed to recently. Just amazing how many throws were going down the field, 20 yards or more. Of course, he scored on a 69-yard touchdown pass from Dale Rogers in the first quarter to give uh, San Jose the 7-0 lead. And now the running back has broken free. Lance Martin, another first down as he has stopped around the 11. And uh, here are some of those big plays. The key plays today, obviously going vertical down the field. And you get the ball number seven's hand, like the offensive staff was talking about. The end zone is at the end result. Tyson Thompson for 69 yards and a touchdown, and now is a 79-yarder to Rufus Skillard from the other quarterback, Adam Trafalis. Trafalis, excuse me. So now first and 10 after Martin gets the first down. Give it right back to number two, and he gets inside the five. Say when you get confidence, Pam, every phase of your game picks up. The offensive line, you know, Boise State's run defense is the top in the nation. But you got a left tackle on William Obeng. That does a nice job allowing the running back to cut back in the weak side. It's a nice flow of the game, the San Jose State offense. They're not scared at all. They, they believe they can beat this team. And on second down, Martin trying the left side of that line, but he is stacked up. Does not pick up anything. So it'll be a third down coming up. They can get a first down without scoring. Get it down to the one, you'll get yourself a first down. And they bring in that mobile quarterback for this third down situation. Adam Teferlis, he comes in there, maybe option, but he's going to that wristband. They said they had 120 plays on that wristband. I don't know how you get all those plays, but we're in Silicon Valley. Technology's here. It's a multi-layered wristband. 
Now on third down, Cabalas heading towards the first down sticks. He's short of the goal line, but should have the first down, and that would be a first and goal, obviously, for San Jose State. Cabalas, the more mobile quarterback for San Jose State. I'm sure Boise State knows he's the guy that's going to run the option, and Boise State hasn't seen the option that much this year. But Tafalis does a nice job just getting down the line of scrimmage. They got a hat on a hat. Just finds a seam and tucks it up underneath his lineman. Boy, and just that much short of getting it in, but again, they didn't need to, uh, to score. Now they have a fresh set of downs. First and goal from about the six-inch line as Dale Rogers now is back in at quarterback. And Rogers sneaks it in the final six inches. And San Jose State has taken the lead again. Well, he's a bigger, not as mobile quarterback, but at 230 pounds, you get behind your center, that's 600 pounds of mass going into the end zone. Just tuck it right in. I want to get your head down in case you get poked in the eye, but Dale Rogers, the senior leader, a quarterback, it's the Spartans back in the lead. Rogers scoring on the ground. And San Jose, which struck first in this game. Jeff Carr nails home the extra point. San Jose State has not trailed in this game yet. And thanks to Dale Rogers, they have taken yet another lead, now 21-14. When somebody asks me what makes my school great, I always say San Jose State University is great because... It's located right here in the heart of Silicon Valley. We have lots of choices for majors in business, engineering, and science. Our student body is diverse. We reflect the changing demographics of the world. And our university prepares us to successfully compete in today's complex global economy. And that's why San Jose State University is Silicon Valley's Metropolitan University. It's where academics count. It's where athletes count. It's where alumni count. Count it all up and you'll have a crystal clear picture of what we believe, who we are, and what we do. Our purpose, our focus, our passion. We are the Western Athletic Conference, where actions count. Boise State trailing San Jose State now 21 to 14. Boise has not led in this game. That was a 75 yard drive. It took them less than three minutes to do it. And, and, and when we talked to you know, the head coach Fitzhill yesterday, he talked a lot like about confidence and how this team has come so close to winning not just this season but last season. So many last minute heartbreaks. And you can feel it. You know, the crowd is feeling it now as well that. Uh, San Jose is definitely in this football game and has a chance. Well, the PA dress announcer, they're broadcasting this all over San Jose and they're trying to get people to fill the stadium because we have an upset brewing, Pam. I mean, the players believe it, the fans believe it like we just talked about. But when you get it done on the field, that's really a true test. And these guys are just getting after defense. Coach Burns has got this defense fired up for San Jose State. 275 yards of total offense already for this Spartan team that averages about 320 per game. And they are doing it against a very good Boise State defense. The Boise State offense gets a lot of pub because they score so many points, most in the nation. But this defense is the best in the whack. Mark on a Lapoon decides to take it out. And he has stopped short of the 20. Let's go back to Matt Weiner. Hi, right, Pam. SEC West rivalry game. Ole Miss and Arkansas. Here Here's come the Jones Hogs. Matt Jones just going to keep it. Great to athlete. Midfield. Former basketball players. You'll see at the end of the play, Jones scores to put the Hogs up, but he's flagged for this. A little dunk. 21 nothing, Arkansas. Uh, Tony Gonzalez can do that with the Chiefs in the NFL, but uh, cannot do that in college football. So uh, they. They nab him for that. Of course, a lot. We're all looking forward to the game later today in the SEC. A little Georgia Auburn action. Come on. That's going to be something. And a BCS ripple as well for teams like 
Boise State and uh, Utah. He needs some of the folks ahead of him to lose to have a chance. Oh, no chance on that play. Lee Marks head on. Matt Costello, that's a couple of good plays the true freshman has made this after, or excuse me, this morning. It's still 10.25 in the morning here. Penetration is the key when, when you're running defense, you get in there, get in the line of scrimmage, you're going downhill, and that was a run blitz all the way. Costello, that sounds good. That sounds really, that's stereo right there, baby. And now on second down, do we pitch or not? Zabranski decides to hang on to it. And is stopped close to the first down by Josh Powell. Powell playing some strong safety today, sophomore from Bakersfield, California. And uh, again, when we talked to the staff yesterday, they were just enthused with uh, Josh Powell and his potential and uh, what he has meant to this football team. Originally, he's a free safety throughout the year, and they couldn't wait to move him to strong safety to get him closer to the line of scrimmage. Number 33, Josh Powell. But he's a headhunter. We see him throughout the year, Pam. These strong safeties that line up for these defensive ball clubs live there for a reason. Hunt on the ball carrier. Best player on this defense is number 33, and a down again. Boy, the San Jose defense, Tony Ficklin this time. And that's another loss. Well, Tony, Tony Ficklin's a guy that usually tackles for a loss. Tony Ficklin on the left end just shoots right in. It's a guard's pull, a tackle pulls. You know, that's film study right there, Pam. You know, Tony Ficklin's a guy that just watched the right tackle, right guard. When they run that plate to the left side, they fan protect in the backside with the offensive line, but Ficklin just shot in there. No hesitation whatsoever. You see, as, as you mentioned, Mike, his tackles for loss way up there in the WAC and in the national ranking. Zabransky rolling, zipping, and a good catch by Avery but it is short of the first down because he had to come back and get the football. He was beyond the sticks, but the pass was thrown a little bit short. It's his third catch of the day. You know, it's interesting. It, you know, this whole defense of San Jose State with a new coordinator, and it's the fourth coordinator in four years, Keith Burns is trying to get these guys to really believe. And he's doing it today by the penetration, guys getting in people's faces. But Burns, he's the type of guy that these players start believing. Something good's going to happen. I tell you, and his enthusiasm is infectious. He was fired up for our meeting yesterday, so he's definitely a fire. He says he's an emotional kind of guy as John Helmendaler picks up the first down for Boise State. ABC's college football doubleheader continues at 3.30 Eastern time, 12.30 on the West Coast. Some of you will see Miami and Virginia. What a good one from Charlottesville. Others get Wisconsin, Michigan State. The two Texases, Tech and A&M, or UCLA, Oregon. Check your local listings for game time in your area. ABC Sports, home of the Bowl Championship Series. Wisconsin has allowed only nine touchdowns in its nine games. A terrific defense as they try to run the table. They're leading the Big Ten along with Michigan. Wisconsin, are they that good? We have a 19-game winning streak on the line here with Boise State, and that's a terrific gain for Marks. 18 yards for Marks coming home to his home state of California. We talked about in the open, a defense for San Jose State has to win on first down. But Lee Marks has different intentions. You know, if they can get, continue to run the football on first down, and get positive yardage because San Jose State's trying to upset them on first down with the aggressive play. And this is indeed what's on the line. They have not lost since September 20th of last year to Oregon State. 19 straight wins, best in the country in Division 1A football. They have trailed three times today. Zabransky trying to get the pass off under pressure, and now he's able to take off. And that's one reason why they love this kid at quarterback. Good pressure by Sean McNamara, but Zabransky had no trouble getting out of there and picking up 15 yards. Well, he has good vision. Zabransky, what happens, they were in man coverage defensively, and the split end receiver to the short side of the field is coming all the way across. But Zabransky sees that with the pressure coming. No one's on that right side. Good heads up play by number five. Zabransky, just a sophomore, watched and learned under Ryan Dinwiddie, who, who had a terrific season, or a terrific career, obviously, at uh, Boise State, the most, uh, one of the most accurate passers in the history of college football. 
And, Dan, and uh, Coach Hawkins talking about Zabransky and how he's, he's poised, he's not intimidated by anything, and really is starting to come into his own as a starting quarterback as they reset the clock here to 212. That's what the slight delay was about. When you, so when you have success early and you're a new starting quarterback for the season, you just need more repetition, more snaps. He's certainly taking advantage of that. Marks hesitates just a second, picks up a nice gain on that one. Let's go down to Dave Ryan. Well, Pam, you mentioned it, Boise coaches telling us Jared Zabranski has really come along in his first year as a starter, taking over for that record-setting quarterback, Ryan Dinwiddie, the former WAC offensive player of the year. Zabranski gradually has become much more efficient, a better decision maker, more accurate throws. He's avoiding turnovers, too, and he's really tough, guys. He's taking some big hits, including that first down run a few moments ago here on the sideline at Boise State. That really fires his teammates up. As Quentin Jones gets the pitch, Jones has already scored. Scored on his first touch, that's his second touch. And it looks like he got a first down. Let's go to Matt Weiner. Hi, Pam, getting ready for halftime here. Coming up at the half, our game day crew gets you set for the marquee game of the day in the SEC, Georgia at Auburn. Also ahead, Big East game with BCS implications. Either Boston College or West Virginia likely playing in one of the big bowl games. Plus, Ron Zook, a conversation with the Zucker the day of his final home game at Florida. Plus, Texas and Michigan in action. We've got updates coming up on the Pontiac High Performance Halftime Report. All right, Matt, Ron Zook uh, going out, had a conversation with uh, our own coach, Bill Curry, very emotional uh, emotional thing, uh, certainly uh, something to look forward to to watch uh, at halftime. Ron Zook handling his situation with a lot of class as uh, he had a very difficult tenure in the coach's last game in the swamp today. So all that's coming up at halftime. First down for Boise State as they try to tie this game for the third time today. Antoine Carter right up the middle as they continue to attack the teeth of that San Jose defense. Six more yards for Carter. We see one running back after the next, Pam. Yeah, they platoon him in very well. Again, role players, Lee Marks, Clinton Jones, Antoine Carter, number eight. Very explosive. I mean, how can you get tired when you're only getting, you know, maybe four or five carries every time you're in the ball game for a series? And they know exactly where they're going, straight for the goal line. Jeff Carpenter is in the uh, backfield. Carpenter has thrown a couple of touchdown passes today. Number 22, very versatile in that way, but he's going out in the pass pattern. The completion down to about the three-yard line to Chris Christopher. Yet another receiver gets in on the act. Christopher's first catch of the day. Well-designed play. They had every area. They went deep, short, and in the flat. And Zabransky had his pick there. Came underneath. You're going to look for that play as the morning grows longer into the early afternoon. Timeout. As we are down to 50 seconds, and a timeout is taken by San Jose. It's final timeout. Boise still has a couple of more to burn as they try to tie things up. But a few people making the trip from Boise, great fans uh, packing at uh, the Bluefield Stadium. It's uh, so famous in Boise, which really is a uh, we're talking to Coach Hawkins about it. Boise is, is, a, is a really, it's a neat town. It's, it's kind of a nice little cosmopolitan town, beautiful part of the country in Idaho, and he is very happy living up there. He's a father of four kids. Had an opportunity last week during the bye week to actually go to a football game. His daughter goes to Montana. He sat in the stands. He said it was a little weird, but he, uh, he said he was analyzing things until his daughter basically said, come on, Dad, chill out. Be a fan. Just be a dad. Come on, be a dad. Yeah, exactly. And he also got to see his son play high school football, so it was a good weekend for him. Well, I agree with you, boys. It's a wonderful part of the country. And they got themselves a heck of a football program. Well, Smart Night ESPN is another great division rivalry game. Willis McGahee leading the Bills against Tom Brady and the defending Super Bowl champion Patriots. Bills and Patriots catch it on high definition or in high definition on ESPN HD. Coverage starts with NFL Primetime presented by Miller Lite at 7.30 Eastern. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. He was so treated very unkindly by his former teammates. Last time they played on October 3rd, Drew was sacked seven times. Oh, that would hurt. Woo. But he but gets I to go back to New England. You know who bought his house in, up in uh, Boston? I do not. Kurt Schilling bought his house. Is that right? Yeah, Drew had this nice big old house he, he built, and Kurt Schilling came to town. Well, I think they're both in the same tax bracket, and they could probably afford the property tax that go uh, with it. I think they could. <laughs> I don't think they're going to. We're going to need a telethon to help pay their uh, property taxes. If that was me playing in Buffalo, I'd just get a mobile home or a trailer. <laughs> That's all I can afford. Kurt Schilling of the world champion, Boston Red Sox. And in for the 
the touchdown is Zabransky. So Jared Zabransky leading a very good drive, and what a way to end the half for Boise State. That's what they wanted to accomplish there in this drive. Put the ball in Zabransky's hands, very mobile. You know, the options, the options come very pivotal for this Boise State team. The straight down the line of scrimmage, confusion on the San Jose State's defensive side. Who has the pitch man? Who has the quarterback? Again, that's got to be addressed at halftime. Because I know Boise State will keep on coming back with it. Tyler Jones to tie up the game, and that is exactly where we stand. So three times today, San Jose State has gotten out to a seven-point lead on the Broncos, and all three times, Zabransky and company have responded. That's one thing. You look at the offensive line, the surge, but Zabransky knew exactly. I don't have to pitch it down here. Just get behind your fullback. Mr. Lally, just get behind his pads. You know, 33, Powell comes up the field too far. You got to know where you are in the field. You got to attack the quarterback and force him to pitch it so it's string to play out a lot longer. But nice way to recover. Zabransky threw an interception earlier today. He responded well, but, you know, San Jose State, Pam, they still believe. 21-21, they played a heck of a game this first half. Remember last year, Boise State won in Boise against San Jose State. 77 to 14 the 77 points the most points ever scored by the Broncos the 77 points the most ever allowed by the Spartans so that was just plain ugly and this one is pretty at 21 apiece it's been ugly in terms of penalties yeah. in this game but uh, boy who would have thought this game would be tied up as we head towards halftime maybe San Jose State and they're faithful I tell you what I call a friend right now and tell him we got an upset room Preston George picking up the ball and then going down nice tackle as he is taken down by Ia Follow. He's had a couple of good tackles on special teams. The freshman from Mountain Home, Idaho. Well, still, you got that threat of a deep pass that San Jose has been throwing all day. Dale Rogers, he's got a cannon. What's you got given us, I'm sorry, Pam, for his first opportunity to start after a well traveled college career. Well, what a, and what a great, really great story of perseverance for this young guy who had to go to some smaller colleges, mostly as a punter, so they wait, he waited basically for scraps and practice as a quarterback, and now he started as a senior. Broussard can't come back to get that one. We're down to 36 seconds left. San Jose State is out of timeouts. I'm impressed with the offensive line play of San Jose State. They're starting a young first-year freshman, John Booker, at left guard. They got senior leadership at both tackles and Staples and Obeng. But they protected Rogers, who, who a guy is not real mobile. He doesn't need to take any more hits than he has to. The coaches yesterday told us that they needed William Obeng to play better, that he did not play well last week against Nevada. Quarterback got beat up a little bit, but he, the rest of his mates, as you mentioned, have responded as Martin gets the ball in the San Jose State. Wanting to let the clock timeout. run out, but Boise. Boise's not going to let him. Boise State takes a timeout. You know why? You're going to force him to a fourth down and think that we could block a punt. You know, don't put anyone back in your return. Put all 11 up there and come after the punter. Boise State has blocked a couple of punts this year. And they have scored a lot of points this year as well. well let's go back to October 3rd when they took on Hawaii, and we have to show you these scores in fast motion or else we'd never get it in. Boise wins it 69 to three. They ran for 425 yards, fourth best in school history. 69 points, third most in school history. Jared Zabransky, longest run from scrimmage in school history, 85 yards, also four rushing touchdowns. He's got himself quite a, quite a bruise there on that left leg as well, but uh, this was that game against Hawaii. Just monstrous, and on the defensive side of the ball, they prohibited Timmy Chang from getting the and setting the NCAA record for most passing yards, which, which he is, uh, which he has set since. Uh, the sense of pride for the defense, but what an offensive showing! And last night, Hawaii gave up 70 points, one more point to Fresno. Well, they got some problems in Hawaii with their defense, no doubt about it. And they're going to set an NCAA record for most points allowed, but. Ooh. You know, back to Boise State for a second. This is only the third away game. They don't play that well on the road. And look at the scoreboard, 21-21. And that's what San Jose was talking about all week long. Stay in the game. They're not a good road team. And they won at UTEP 47-31. Mike Price doing a wonderful job reviving that program. 
Oh, as the ball is fumbled away, this is exactly what Boise State wanted. When they take that timeout, you leave a little extra time on the clock. Martin could not hang on to the football, and the Broncos, with one timeout left in 24 seconds, are within striking distance. That's what happens when you're looking downfield, not looking the ball in your hands. But Coach Hawkins did a nice job. But, you know, Martin, number two, he's looking up the field, looking at the defender. Very fundamental play. Just pitch it, look it into your stomach, tuck the ball, know the situation, the time on the clock. You do not want to give Boise State any opportunities. But his eyes are up the field here. He's not looking the ball in. Andrew Browning coming up with the recovery. And they have it on the 17-yard line. One timeout left. And you see the last three games, the turnovers have really hurt the Spartans. They have a four-game losing streak coming into two today. Zabransky, and there's a little end around. It's taken by Lawrence Beatty, and Beatty leaps into the end zone for the touchdown. It takes just one play for Boise State to make the Spartans pay for the turnover. As he has looked over. Third and five from the eight, meanwhile, for San Jose State. They got a fumble, and now we're in good field position. Ball is zipped and incomplete as he was looking for Rufus Skiller. And Skiller has caught a touchdown pass, but uh, Shafalis unable to hook up with him. Gabe Franklin was covering. Yeah, Skillen had a difficult time coming out of his break, slipping down that end zone. Ball was on target. Just weren't on the same page, and there was an opportunity for them to capitalize on another turnover and turn it into a seven-point tie game. But now you let them line up for a field goal attempt. It's our first field goal attempt of the game. We've only had one punt in this game. Jeff Carr in to try from 25 yards out. He has never missed from inside the 30 in his collegiate career. And it's a fake. The direct snap goes back to the holder, Bo Pierce, and he scores. Bo Pierce, the third string quarterback who acts as the holder, takes it in for the score. How do you like me now, Bo Pierce? Well-designed play. Coach Hawkins and the whole defensive Boise State team. This is a run all the way. They had the look they, they wanted on the field goal block team. Nobody was out there in the perimeter, fam. Walks into the end zone. Fitz Hill rolling the dice, and that one works as Pierce now is into hold for the extra point. And this time he does indeed hold. So fired up is number 16. And San Jose's tied it. So a little trickery deep in the playbook for the Spartans. And they are tied up with Boise. Get the ESPN Full Court College Basketball pay-per-view package with more than 450 of the best games all season long. To order, call your local cable company, DirecTV, or Dish Network. You know, I remember, I mean, her phone Barbara. Barbara. Yeah. Alligators evolved over 200 million years. And like other reptiles, scientists Jim. can tell their age by looking... Jim. Yeah? Tonight's not good for me. How's Tuesday? Sure. This holiday season, get a DirecTV DVR with TiVo so you can watch your favorite shows when you're ready. Sign up now and get one for under $50. Call 1-800-DIRECTV today. Introducing the 300 horsepower Acura RL with voice activated technology and the world's most advanced all wheel drive. It shifts power to exactly where you need it for dramatically improved handling in all weather conditions. The road will never be the same. The all new Acura RL. People everywhere are experiencing a breakthrough. I'm Taco Bell's new Big Bell Value menu. Featuring the spicy chicken burrito with shredded chicken simmered in authentic Mexican spices. To keep your stomach and your wallet full, think outside the barn. When you want to find her just the perfect gift, it helps to know the people who know diamonds. Zales Music Box by Lennox with the diamond heart pendant, just $99. Zales, the diamond store. ESPN2's College Football Saturday. Brought to you by NFL Sunday Ticket, only from DirecTV. 
Call 1-800-DIRECT-TV or visit your local retailer for details. And Acura. Experience the performance today at your local Acura dealer. Still morning here in San Jose, and uh, Bo Pierce, third-string quarterback, taking in the fake field goal for a touchdown. And the kicker, Jeff Carr, they've had trickery before. Jeff Carr against Hawaii a couple of weeks ago scored on a six-yard run off the fake. He's the only kicker in Division 1A to score a touchdown this season. Quentin Jones decides to take a knee as uh, we go back to Matt Weiner. Matt. Pam Northwestern came right out of the locker and scored at Michigan, so the Wolverines have to answer, and they do. Chad Henney up top. Look at the great grab by Jason Avant. So the big blue back on top, 21-13. In the battle for Floyd Rosedale, Lawrence Maroney having a big day, 138 yards, second touchdown run of the afternoon. Minnesota right back into it. It's a three-point game in the third. This we expected, Matt, with those two games. Entertaining game today in the Big Ten, and we have an unexpectedly entertaining game here ourselves. Boise State, a 33-point favorite coming into this game, is tied up with San Jose. Zabransky fumbled the last time they had the ball here, and uh, that led to San Jose's touchdown. Lee Marks coming out with authority here in the second half is finally dragged down around the 43 by Jarrell Hardy. But let's go back to that fake field goal touchdown, Mike. You know, a lot more field goals are called, field goal fakes are called, but you got to have the right look. San Jose State had the right look. You got five guys right over the center, nobody on the perimeter. You get one kickout block by an offensive lineman, and Bo Pierce surprises Boise State and gets his game tied up. Pierce is a senior quarterback. He threw all of five passes last season and did get to play a little bit against Rice this year, fumbled the handoff, and that's one reason why they had to make another quarterback change, put Rodgers in, even though he was hurt. And that's a big loss. On that play, they lose four. Let's go to Dave Ryan. Pam, the injury update now on Broncos senior left defensive end Julius Roberts. Left knee sprain. He's in a lot of pain. He was writhing for quite a few minutes there. The trainers are saying he's doubtful to return. They did tape the left knee. They try to immobilize that. I don't see ice yet. That's probably a good sign, but he's taking those gloves off. And guys, a moment ago, just really beside himself, despondent that he can't get in the game. Such a close one here to help out his Boise State defense. Yeah, that's extremely painful when you get hit from the outside in. Speaking from experience, you know, sprain can lead to a more devastating injury, but hopefully it's only a sprain. Of course, it's frustrating because the defense has not really played that well today, and they need to keep on winning. Blitz up the middle. Zabransky gets it off to T.J. Acree, and Acree slides out of bounds at the 45. So Zabransky pressured up the middle by Ezekiel Staples, but got it off. Well-designed screenplay, but the pressure gets to him extremely well. That was a dangerous throw out to the perimeter. Zabransky could have had another turnover happen for his ball club, but T.J. Acree, Johnny on the spot. Ezekiel Staples, another former walk-on for San Jose. His only offer came from a Division II school in Colorado. Walked on here, now is a starter and a very important part of this defense for the Spartans, and that's all sorts of stuff. Movement by the Boise State line. A lot of communication on both sides of the ball, pointing out formations. I got him, you got him, we're going to blitz. Dead ball, ball start, number 56 offing. That Ryan is the fifth, third down. fifth ball start penalty against Boise State, tenth penalty overall. I guarantee you that was addressed in the locker room at halftime. They get people up there, you know, just, you know, what they're doing is stemming. San Jose State has been stemming throughout the whole game, their defensive front, and it calls the offensive line a jump. Now third and 13, Zabransky's completed seven straight passes and doesn't have a chance to make it eight. Tony Ficklin coming in for another sack. His sixth of the season leads the team. The well, Boise State, I know, is not used to getting this much pressure in the pocket. This offensive line, this first series for them, actually second series in the second half, they just bring it everyone they bring one more than they could block and they had a miscommunication inside and result was a big sack well, tony ficklin has been a linebacker defensive end and defensive tackle gets another sack first punt of the game and it's blocked san jose states blocked the punt bobby godinez blocks it 
the Spartans continue to shock Boise. Well, they had 14 unanswered points going into halftime. Boise State, how do they overcome a 28-21 deficit? You do it with turnovers. Three times today they've had turnovers. I don't think Boise State anticipated this. They go right inside the shoulder, number six. Bobby Godinez. Well executed. It's drawn up like the special team coach draws it up. But for the player to go out there and execute, take it right off his foot. What a turnaround for the Spartan team. Dale Rogers in at quarterback. That's the first punt that Boise State has had blocked this year. And San Jose. San Jose has it from the 20, low pump day, going in the end zone for the touchdown, throwing into double coverage. The ball falls incomplete. James Jones, the intended receiver. San Jose State coming up with some big plays. First, Tony Ficklin sack. And then the punt attempt by Stringer. And Bobby Godinez charges in and they take over at the 20. What an effort by the San Jose State team. And now Adam Kefalis comes in to play quarterback. The screen completes it to Brian Wagey, his tight end. And Wagey powers forward close to the first down. Great job by number 37, Austin Smith, for Boise State's defense. They had a convoy out there. And if it wasn't for Austin Smith being in the right spot, just fighting through offensive linemen coming downfield. But you talk about a sequence just previously, Pam. There's a thing called confidence and false confidence. And I think right now, San Jose State has a great deal of confidence. You just feel it on the sideline. We're closer to San Jose State, but you just feel the tide turning here. Because of the block punt, before that, the fumble recovery. They have started both of their possessions here on this side of the field. And that's another first down as Lance Martin is tackled down by Alex Guerrero. But another first down for Fitzhill's team. You know, if you get inside the red zone, scoring territory, Boise State pretty much all morning and early, after, not even afternoon yet, been bringing eight guys up to the line of scrimmage. If the running back could break that first seam, there's nobody in the secondary that could stop him. Yep, folks, it is uh, about 11, 27, or 28 Pacific time as we, <laughs> we wait for the afternoon to come. Martin breaks free of a, an ankle tackle attempt. And boy, they just second and third effort powers his way down to the five-yard line. Austin Smith with the tackle. Talking to these San Jose players, they're on national television. They're not on national television that often, but in fact have not lost on ESPN2. They are 3-0 all time. And the coaches yesterday were saying that they're excited because they're going to be on the sports ticker. They're playing a top 25 team in San Jose State. And, you know, people across the country right now are seeing that bottom line and saying, 28-28? Yeah, I know Steve DeBerg sitting real close to the TV right now, former alum, he and Jeff Garcia. Trafalis! is stopped just short of the end zone as Cam Hall gets him. Third down coming up. That's right, and a great football tradition at San Jose, as you mentioned. Steve DeBerg went here, obviously. Jeff Garcia went here. Bill Walsh played here. Dick Vermeil played here. John Ralston, Jack Elway coached here. I mean, this is a, a proud tradition of football, and they're really trying to, to revive it. And they will have a new athletic director coming in, and uh, they, they want to continue to play football and uh, try to get things going. Some great names. Well, here's a great name for yeah. you. Kim Bocamper. There you go. One of the killer bees. Gerald Wilhite. Gil Bird. Third and goal, and Rodgers gets nowhere. Boy, he tried to sneak, and I don't think he got anything. So now fourth and goal, Mike. All right, they went on a, a fake field goal. Is there any question they're going to try here to they're going stuff for it, it in? They're going for it. I mean, Rodgers has one TD on the quarterback sneak. That time, he did a poor job. He didn't take a step back. The best way to do a quarterback sneak, people, take a step back away from center, let the surge happen, keep your head up, and just power your way in there. Get low. Dave Ryan, go ahead. At halftime, Fitz Hill told me we have nothing to lose. Big plays like this, we're going to go for it, guys. In this game, they need a victory so badly, they're going to roll the dice. They've already gone for a fourth down twice today and made it once. They're going for the touchdown with Rodgers. He's in! Barely, but that's all it takes. And San Jose State takes the lead again. 
Well, I think Dale Rogers would listen to my comments there. You take a step back, let the line surge, and then you keep your eyes open, and you find a seam. He didn't have anything over the center. He just moved to the right guard and right tackle, and that second effort got him in the end zone. But, you know, 14 unanswered points by San Jose State coming out in the second half. You had Boise State do that in the first half. Coach Hill's got this team believing. It's a second one-yard sneak for a touchdown that Rodgers has pulled off today. That one on fourth down. Bo Pierce holding for Jeff Carr. And San Jose State has scored the first two touchdowns of this second half, helped by a fumble recovery and then a blocked punt, a fake field goal, all sorts of good stuff going on right now for the hometown Spartans. Pitts Hill's team trying to pull off a very improbable upset. Score a lot of points, 47.2 per game on average, leads the country. And now Lawrence Beatty, who has already shown that he can come around and be dangerous on runs. Beatty has scored on a 17-yard end around earlier in the game. And they continue to move the chains. Larry Collins finally made the stop. Well, that's considered somewhat trickier because it's going to a receiver that's in the slot, motions back across the field, and you just hand off to him. He had some good blocking in that left side with College and, and Miller giving a wall to run on the perimeter. 19 yards for Beatty. First down now on the 12. Marks going behind the big guys on the left side, and he is taken down by Matt Costello, the true freshman. Continuing to make some big plays, but six more yards for Boise. And the one thing I've noticed when Boise State's able to sustain drives for a period of time, the San Jose State defense sucking some wind. They can't go side on the sideline, you know, on long drives. They don't have a lot of depth on defense, and they try to shuttle in personnel. But remember, Boise State sh settles in personnel at the personnel. Antoine Carter in for Lee Marks, who has gone over the 100-yard rushing mark for the third time this season. Give it right up to Carter, right up the middle, and in the end zone. A gaping hole, and Boise State with a very impressive drive. Darren College again, that left tackle from North Pole, Alaska. Boy, what a player he is. Well, good point, Pam. Left tackle, College. Big prospect, junior. A lot of pro scouts are looking at him early. Gets one guy, washes him down, gets his hands on another guy. The big bully just throws people into the end zone. And allows Carter to get in there. Boy, what a find getting Darren College out of Alaska. And Boise State has tied up the game. It's a long way, North Pole, Alaska, huh? All right, Darren College, they found him. Actually, another assistant coach called up the Boise staff, said, take a look at this guy, and he's turned into be one, one of the best tackles in the country. Somewhere, there's a man accessing sensitive information by way of a fingerprint, while a security team closely monitors the ship's cargo, helping to keep our ports safer. And a dad checks on his business from his son's baseball game. What do all these people have in common? They rely on America's number one security company, ADT. Always there. You guys on the road a lot? Yeah. Send your wives pictures with Sprint PCS Vision Picture Phones. Show them you're working hard. Show them your pretty face. Show them that prize bull. Check it out. More people use Sprint PCS Vision Picture Phones than any other to easily share unlimited pictures. Now at Sprint stores, buy one starting at $29.99. Just point and shoot. We know how to do that. <laughs> Sprint PCS. Now that's better. Smiles are contagious, and I smile a lot because I love what I do. <laughs> the best part about being a Denny's general manager is when I see a guest that comes in in one mood and they leave with a whole new look in their face. A good meal changes everything, like our new fabulous fruit-filled pancakes full of apples, blueberries, or cherries. And it comes with eggs, bacon, and sausage for just $4.99. It even looks kind of like a smile, see? And at our Denny's, you'll see a lot of those. Denny's, we're cooking now. Darren College blocked a couple of San Jose State Spartans on the way. Antoine Carter clearing the space for Antoine to score on a six-yard touchdown run. 
81 yards, only took him two minutes and 43 seconds to do it. And Boise State has tied up this crazy game at 35 apiece. So now it's San Jose's turn to respond when the up man picks it up and is tackled down around the 27-yard line. For more in college, let's go down to Dave Ryan. Yeah, he's from North Pole, Alaska, Penn. Three years, that's all he played organized football. He couldn't play in high school as a freshman or sophomore because his legs grew too fast for his knees in a tremendous growth spurt. Now he's an NFL prospect, as Mike mentioned. 36 straight starts for Boise State. He's a great athlete in high school, guys. Played baseball. He threw about 80 miles an hour as a pitcher on the diamond. Played basketball, soccer. Was a snowboarder, ice climber, and mountain climber. Strength and greatness. He's got both of those. He holds three Boise State weight room records now. Got 291 pounds. Going to have to put on some weight. He still has one more year left in college. As Rogers, under pressure, locks it up towards Broussard. And it's tipped and intercepted. Great play by Jerry. Alexander and Alexander finally is taken down but what a terrific play to get the turnover his third interception of the season that's what San Jose State's game plan was we have nothing to lose let's go down the field but the end result is a turnover because you're trying to get it all in one play Gerald Alexander great ball skills he stays with the football tips it up keeps it in his vision he turns into a running back once he gets a turnover. But that's the first turnover, the second turnover, I'm sorry, by San Jose State. You know, he doesn't get challenged that much all the time. Everyone goes after Gabe Franklin. I think Gerald Alexander is the better cover guy. But both guys have produced in the turnover category. 29-yard return gives them the ball on the 38. Boise trying to strike again and marks. Just carving up that defense for another first down run. You talk about a scooter. Lee Marks. Watch his balance. Good balance. Just stays low. He's got good vision. And running backs, notoriously, if you give him vision to the outside, they're going to look there first. That's where all the daylight is. To the turnover story right now. And uh, Marks, 5'7. Out here in. Uh, from right here in California, he takes a break. Here comes Jeff Carpenter. And Carpenter going around the left side, nudged out of bounds, but Boise State will have it first and goal again. That was a 19-yard pickup for Carpenter. If I'm Coach Burns, I'm ripping somebody. They're not tackling at all. We talked about when they sustain drives, the San Jose State defense starts to suck a little wind. And they platoon their running backs, and Carpenter, very elusive. You got to wrap them. You can't just throw your body at them. These guys are too good. They're too strong in their lower body. It's run through arm tackle. Keith Burns, the first year defensive coordinator. Marks back in after a one play break, and he gets it down to around the two yard line. Now, Pam, we talked about the strike ability. When turnovers happen, that's where Boise State becomes a better football team. They just, their mindset is we know we can score. So go ahead and drive it down the field. They've run the football three times now, and they've covered, what, 60 yards in about three plays. And conversely, San Jose State is the kind of team that cannot afford to give up these turnovers. Not that any team really can, but they're a scuffling team right now. They've only, they've only won twice this year. And then right up the gut, in for another touchdown. This time it's John Helmendaler, his second score of the day. So Boise continuing to go to its variety of weapons. And after the interception, a touchdown for Helmendaler. Well, that was the result of the offensive line play. Watch these two guys double team hard down inside. Not only do you get on the guy, McNamara stunts down on side, and College just takes him down. Washes the whole left side out. Helmand Dollar, the freshman, as the extra point is added. In this seesaw game, now the uh, the score in, in favor of Boise State. Helmand Dollar, the, the Idaho High School Player of the Year in 2001, averaged over eight yards a carry in his high school career. There's a couple of touchdowns here in San Jose this morning. <laughs> Still this morning. I mean, Darren Collins, a lot of pro scouts are looking at this. He's only a junior. Got a good story. Tremendous athlete. 
And he's continuing to, to open up holes, particularly in the last two drives, Mike. He has been impressive. Well, he, he has been impressive. And, you know, give credit to the rest of the guys in the offensive line. Miller and Adams, the center. Clayton Adams, number 65. MJ Ansel, number 70. We may have uh, carried the way now as Boise State takes the lead again. We are in day 17 of 19 straight days of primetime football tonight. Alabama has only lost once in Baton Rouge since 1970. Can they do it again? They take on Nick Saban and LSU. College football Saturday primetime at 745 Eastern on ESPN. Alabama LSU also available in high definition on ESPN HD. For more information, log on. ESPN.com, two of the better defensive teams in the country. Alabama number one in total D, LSU. At number four is uh, Hellman Dollars getting that right arm worked on a little bit. Now, Pammy, talk about how a turnover has an adverse effect for the team that create or committed it. Boise State goes down with an understanding that we could put the dagger in the heart, but you question the play call and the first down. Scores tied. You go ahead and try to get it all in one play. When you throw the ball downfield, three things can happen. Two of them are bad. This is one of the few times that they have kicked away to Broussard, who scored on a kickoff return for a touchdown last week. They've been squibbing them, and Broussard takes it out to the 30 as we take you back to Matt Weiner. Pam, Michigan getting comfortable in the big house against Northwestern. Chad Henney looking for Steve Breston. He's open, and he's in for the score. Second touchdown pass of the day for Henney at 35-13 there. Penn State back in the end zone. Zach Mills on the keeper. They reviewed this, gave him the touchdown, so the Nittany Lions have taken a one-point lead at Indiana. Boston College putting it to West Virginia in the Big East, 27-7, and Temple up on Syracuse. Wow, Temple beating the Orange, and a very impressive day for BC. Another fumble for San Jose, but Tyson Thompson is able to hold on to it, and they're, uh, they're really living dangerously here. Well, that's what this program has been doing the last four years. They're so close to winning games, and when you're two and six, you can't be self-destructive because your margin of error is so small against good football teams. And this has been a crazy game. We've had three lead changes and three different 14 straight point spurts, two for Boise and one for San Jose. Not a lot of defense in this game, but we've had everything else. Up top, Rodgers. Oh, what a grab! Terrific grab by Rufus Skillern, who has to turn around at the last second to gather it in. Well, Rufus Skillern, talk about timing. Quarterback knew exactly where his receiver was going to be. Sometimes you got to stand in the pocket, throw the ball early, knowing you're going to get hit. They tried this earlier in the game. Nice ball location. Tremendous job by the receiver getting his head around and finding the football. A new career high for Rufus Skiller in five catches, but the career high part, 127 yards. He also has a touchdown scored on a 79-yarder back in the first quarter. And a new quarterback back in is for Fallis as uh, Rodgers goes out for a second. And Lance Martin, little Lance Martin, listed at 5'10", powering his way and uh, getting into Boise territory. Keeping with our theme, the early morning start out here in the West Coast is like a backyard football game. You know, you get up early, the grass is wet, the sun's shining right in your face. But the drive, keeping that feet moving. You know, you're going against your neighbor. You don't have any friends out there. You keep on driving, keeping those feet going, turning the linemen, keep on fighting for you. And that's one thing, too, about the whack now in second and three. There are a lot of teams that, boy, they, they just don't like each other. There's a lot of good rivalries and, and a lot of cool, nasty stuff going on between a lot of these teams. All it takes is one punch in the mouth not to like somebody. Martin on the pitch, first down, San Jose State. As we approach the one-minute mark here in the third quarter, that's five more yards for Martin. That's one thing, Pam. I remember playing in the backyard with my brother, and I would always do pretty well until I bloodied his nose. And once I bloodied his nose, I ran for the street corner. <laughs> you can't bloody anyone's nose because it's in a water of the eyes and it's turned into the eye of the tiger. Martin now with 33 yards. Fitzhill again in his fourth season here. There were only wins this year, by the way. They beat Morgan State 47-28 in that crazy 70-63 game here on October 2nd. And that was in regulation. That's ridiculous. What a fun game that must have been. Going up top for Skillern. But Gabe Franklin was right there. Strafalis chucked that one up. I know Coach Hill's talking 
the quarterback. Now he got outside the pocket, and this is your more mobile quarterback. Cafrellis is the guy that, when he gets out here, he's trying for the home run. He had ample yards to run on a first down situation. And that's going to come with maturity, Pam. You know, you get young quarterbacks that are eager and are seeing the other quarterbacks have success throwing the football off the field. Sometimes you're a product of your own success. A couple of tight ends now for San Jose. Trafalis. Nothing doing there as he has just wrapped up Corey Hall leading the charge from his linebacking spot, and he loses a couple. I think Boise State's defensive coordinator is starting to get a feel for the option play. Ron Collins, when San Jose State goes to a two tight end set and two receivers to the same side, they usually run the option away from it, and they guess right in that play. They brought the linebackers up to the line of scrimmage. Loss of a yard, so it's third and 11 as Dale Rogers checks back in at the quarterback spot. And another stoppage in play. Timeout, San Jose. First timeout. So on a third and 11, San Jose going to make sure all their ducks are in a row as uh, they try to once again draw even in this crazy game. More football on your way today. ABC's College Football Doubleheader continues at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific. Some of you will see a great one in the ACC, Miami at Virginia. Others get Wisconsin, Michigan State, Texas Tech, Texas A&M, or UCLA, Oregon. Check local listings for the game in your area. ABC Sports, home of the bowl championship series. Really looking forward to that Virginia-Miami game. Miami in an uncharacteristic slide for them. Well, let's go down to Dave right now. Right up. Well, Pam, you know, football is a game where players tolerate a lot of pain. Certainly the case with Spartan quarterback Dale Rogers back on September 25th against SMU. He suffered a torn meniscus in his right ear knee. He didn't practice at all the next week for that Rice game, but when his backup, another backup weren't effective, the coaches had a choice. Do we play an injured Dale Rogers or the others? Even banged up Rogers was the better player. The Spartans scored in the first two plays Rogers was in that day against Rice. He's been playing since torn meniscus and all. He'll need surgery after the season. Talk about tough and an inspiration to his Spartan teammates. Absolutely. Threw five touchdowns in that game against Rice. The first snap, Tyson Thompson ran for 74 yards and a score. Second snap, a 67-yard touchdown pass to John Broussard in a, in a situation, like you said, Rhino, where they really needed him because uh, Trafala struggled. Bo Pierce was not experienced enough, and uh, Rodgers is tough, but it's been a long road to hoe for him. This is his third college. And on third and 11, he's showing more of the toughness. Going downfield towards his tight end, Wagey, and he was double covered. Wagey wanted a flag. There was a lot of bumping and thumping, but no laundry. Cam Hall and Colt Brooks on the coverage. Dale Rogers did a good job buying himself time, but there's the bumping and thumping you're talking about, Pam. There's a bump and there's a thump. Ball on the ground. Colt Brooks, number 31, did a nice job fighting off that potential completion. No flag. So on fourth and 11, Waylon Frather is in the uh, freshman. Only his second punt of the day. This has not been a punt kind of day. This has been a touchdown or a turnover kind of day. Now, I know Boise State's alert for the fake, alert for the fake. You never know the way uh, San Jose has been playing. He scored on a fake field goal earlier in this game. But he is kicking away. And it was taken by Austin Smith. And flag is down as Smith is written out of bounds around the 14-yard line. You're never supposed to feel the punt inside the 10-yard line, Pam, but that doesn't happen at Boise State. They could score when the ball's at the one-yard line, going 99. Five seconds left to go here in the third quarter. Holding number 18 on the return team. 15 yards from the spot of the foul. First down. So the holding call will take it back a little bit more as uh, Smith looked like he might have taken one in the face at the end of that at the end of that punt return. You ever return punts, Mike? No. You weren't that crazy. No. I, I used, <laughs> in practice, I used to mess around because nobody would, would go out there with the punter because the punters and kickers were always out early. And being a ex-holder, I would go out there and try to catch them, but. Those teams come out with a lot of velocity. I'm a lot of, you. They come down pretty fierce. And, and so do the punt coverage guys. Yeah. It's a, it's a thankless job. I mean, you're like a kamikaze waiting for the ball to come down. You get knocked in the head in a heartbeat. So first down from the seven. Boise State leading San Jose by a touchdown. 
And going down right away is Antoine Carter, dropped by Eric Wilson. And that will do it for the third quarter. San Jose State continuing to hang in against Dan Hawkins' team. Fix Hill trying to pull off the upset. Fourth quarter coming up. Great. How about that? Reese Lloyd missing that field goal. Boy, Minnesota, we saw them in the first game of the year. And they look like world destroyers. And their season has really gone south in a hurry. Fumbled snap, but Trafalis picks it up and gives it to Thompson. He falls forward for maybe a yard. Mike Dominguez making the stop. San Jose State has never beaten Boise State. These two teams have only played four times, three times since Boise joined the WAC in 2001. And not only have they not beaten them, they've never gotten even close. On average, they have lost 59 to 9 to this team, including 77 to 14 last year in Boise. Year before that, 45-8, then 56 to 6 in 2001. That's that's not close. Pitch to Lance Martin. He is up close to another first down on a third and two. Mike Williams making the stop. He's played a good game. The sophomore from Lethbridge, Alberta, has a couple of sacks and has made some good stops, Mike. Yeah, Mike Williams, is, you know, he knows his assignment when it comes to the option game. Just goes right down the line of scrimmage and is there for the tackle. But getting back to that deficit, it's a 50-point deficit in the four times they've played. And I could see why they're a 33-point underdog, but give San Jose State credit. Going into fourth quarter, all you can ask your ball club to do is stay in it, give yourself an opportunity, and the fourth quarter hits, and everything's right in their hands right now as they're driving here. And to clarify, that, that, that margin is just in the three times since they joined the WAC. They first played in 1978. Boise went 30-15, to and Boise was still a 1AA school. That is a first down. Let's go down. Well, defensive players have the mindset to attack and be aggressive, but... You know, enough said about that. Let's move on to further action. Third and one. Another big play. <laughs> the foul's on the option. Pitches it at the last second to Martin, who picks up the first down. He just got that off. Boy, he was uh, wrapped up, and the Martin was there, and... Another first down. That's not what you coach at the quarterback position when you're running the option. Go ahead and pitch it there. Okay, keep it, tuck it up inside, but he has other things in his mind and turns out to be successful. That's one of those things that could have went the other way, Pam, and you got to know where you are on the field. Protect the football, you're only down seven points. But they got lucky there, and they've been getting lucky all afternoon. Well, he got hit twice before he pitched the ball. Man. First and 10 from the 13. San Jose trying to tie this game up again. Pass. Oh, what a catch by Skiller. Going across his body. His eighth catch. His career high day continues. Well, Skiller is just a marvelous with his hands. You know, he's wearing that number 80. There's a guy up the coast, Jerry Rice, that did it for so many years. Not that there's comparison, but you look at the eye-hand coordination. Skillern, a junior out of Oakland. Eight catches for 154 yards, and that was a that was a spectacular grab. Second and four for the Spartans. They are the option every time they've been in this set. Nelson Thompson is the back. And he gets pitched to and runs around a would-be tackler. Jared Hunter, number 49, was there, and Thompson ran around him like he was a ghost. Well, not only Tyson Tom Thompson has the Jets, but he's got the Jukes, too. There's the Juke. Here come the Jets. That's positive yardage. I mean, you can't coach that. Either player has it, and you tell it, the, the defensive coaches are told, they tell the players, watch his hips. Watch it. Well, you start watching his hips, and you don't know which way to go. San Jose State reversing things on third down, both offensively and defensively, and that's one big reason. Well, they're close to tying it up. Lance Martin right up the gut, stopped right at the cusp of the goal line. Well, the guys in the offensive line have been getting it done. They've been protecting the quarterback very well. They've been opening up some holes. He stopped, Mike, but that's a first down. First and goal, Spartans. Just jump on San Jose State's offensive line again. New freshman starter at left guard, John Booker. 
Kant, the center, number 76. Novella, the right guard. I mean, these guys are just coming off the football. You might see a quarterback sneak here. First and goal, Martin stacked up, but then powers his way into the end zone. And San Jose State continues to make this one heck of a ball game. We hear coaches talk about it all the time. Games are won and lost at the line of scrimmage. In that particular drive, they only threw two times, but the running game, very promising for the San Jose team to take the ball, drive down, to tie the game up. We're talking about the number 10 team in the country in the BCS standings. We got a team that's two and six right now that believes they could win this game. Martin's third touchdown of the year, now for the tie. 42 apiece. An impressive drive by the Spartans. They go 61 yards in 4 minutes and 45 seconds. Cap it off with a Martin touchdown run. And we are tied up. He's off the right side of the line of scrimmage. Staples a right tackle. Novella, right guard. Just get movement. Give me a little movement. And you're only looking at two yards. So we're tied up. Let's go down to Dave Ryan. Well, Pam and Mike, a couple times in the last touchdown drive for San Jose State, I saw defensive backs for Boise, hands on helmets, and absolute shock. Some nice plays are being made, not just on catches, but on pitches that went for a couple of good gainers for the Spartans. I think these guys are shocked in the sideline. I'm not sure they know how to act. We talked earlier about their emotion. I'm still not seeing anyone get fired up, get in people's faces, or the coaches get overly emotional. Boise State looks like they're in a state of shock on this sideline right now, guys. Again, they were huge, huge favorites coming in, about a 33-point favorite to win. They did beat this team 77 to 14 last year. And now they are tied up at 42 apiece. And here's a program, San Jose State, that only has 65 scholarships to work with. And next year they're gonna get a little bump in that, but they're gonna talk about this program, you know, moving out of Division I. They're playing a team right now at their best, and they're matching them. Oh, and for the second straight time, San Jose State's Jeff Carr kicks a what... ball out. And the last time they did this back in the first half, Boise refused the penalty and had him kick again. He's going to do the same thing. Illegal kick out of bounds by the kicking team. They will re-kick after a five-yard That's a thought pitch. process. Here's your special team coach or even Coach Hawkins. Send him back because we could return the next kickoff for a touchdown. So instead of taking it at the uh, 35, they're going to have him re-kick. We are in Spartan Stadium. We kicked off at 9.02 local time about three and a half hours ago. Four minutes and 42 seconds left to go in this game in what would be perhaps the biggest upset that we've seen this year. Coming up next, College Game Day now presented by Acura, but we still have quite a bit of football left. San Jose trying to pull off the most improbable of upsets. And let's see if declining the penalty pays off. And it will. Big run back, Quentin Jones. The big playmaker for the Broncos makes another one. And he is stopped at the 39-yard line of San Jose. A 54-yard return. I know why they do it. I know why they decline those kicks out of bounds. They just have so much confidence in the return game. You know, the, talk about special team kickoff return. They call it kickoff to the house. Kickoff return to the house, but Smith, Quentin Jones does a nice job just getting up in that seam and the rest of it he does in his own. The longest kickoff return of the year for Boise State. It had been 40 yards. That was 54, by far Jones's longest. And the gamble again pays off. And where the Boise coach is talking about just getting the ball in this kid's hands. And he's really going to help that average with a 54-yard return. First down from the 39. Zabransky up top, going for it all, a battle. T.J. Akery incomplete. Let's go back to Matt Weiner. And looks like Joe Paterno is going to get his first Big Ten win of the season. Fourth down for Indiana. Chris Taylor stumped at the goal line. Nittany Lions on their way to their first Big Ten victory since beating Indiana last year. 
That's right, Indiana, the only team they've been able to beat in conference play in the last couple of seasons. So much uh, heat turned up on Joe Paterno. Here we have a lot of heat on Boise State. 13th ranked team in the country, 10th in the BCS standing, but they are tied up with two win San Jose State. Coming around the end. Lawrence Beatty, he has had success on that play a couple of times today, but nothing doing. Eric Wilson stuffs him. Third and ten coming up. The Coach Burns, defensive coordinator for San Jose State, is getting eight guys in the line of scrimmage, and when you do that, penetration hurts that type of play. When you go from the left side of the formation, try to run the right side, penetration is going to nullify any advancement of the football. But here's a team defensively all morning and early afternoon here at San Jose Stadium to put pressure on a number 13, number 10 team in the country in the BCS standings. Boise one for five on third and long today. This is another one at third and ten. Underneath the Beatty, and he is immediately tackled down. Once again, Josh Powell makes a huge play. Well, Paul sniffed that one out from the snap. He was just looking right into the backfield, used his vision to see the receiver come back and went for that middle screen. That's real time. He gave Beatty a headache. But Josh Powell, formerly a free safety, they finally moved him this week. He's getting great pressure. He's got eight tackles already around the football, a sack. I mean, he's getting, they don't give out many awards in their helmet, but he'd get a bunch of them today. Fourth straight time that San Jose State has held Boise's potent offense for me. <laughs> Pitch, get it back to Lance Martin. Oh, Martin gets through. Breaks through another tackle out near midfield. Andy Avalos missed a tackle and then 26 yards on the game for Martin. Can you believe it? Yeah, this guy's over. You start to believe, you get the confidence. There's Martin hitting and spinning. You got receivers working downfield, number 80, Skiller, on your right side of your screen. Just selfish play, unselfish play by the San Jose State Ball Club. And Boise State needs to step up right now if they plan on winning this game. 26 yards for Martin, his longest run of the season, longest run of the game for San Jose, and he's got it! Skiller makes the catch, but a flag is down. And the official waving it off right away. Skiller and Austin Smith were locked up. That is mighty close, Pam. I thought that catch was mighty close. He was waving his arms, not in the incomplete motion, perhaps, because there's no doubt that Skillern was in. They've gone with the Frawlers this whole second half, basically. Uh, give me another angle. Here's a good angle for us. Watch his right foot. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. That's a catch, unless he's saying that perhaps he didn't have complete control, but it, it looked like a catch to me all the way. I think he was so fired up about the call he made, he forgot to look at the feet. Yeah. And his head was up, was the official, as he, as he threw the flag, but at least they get the penalty. And now the ball is marked at the 34. It's not like the NFL where you get the spot foul. And now going right back to Skiller against Alexander. He tips it and can't come up with it. But that old saying, at first you don't succeed, try, try again. And Skillern has had quite a day. A career day, in fact. Rufus, my man. He's catching the ball all over the place, tremendous hands, good vision. Just a playmaker. Rufus Skillern, number 80. Only a junior out of Oakland, California. Eight catches for 152 yards and a 79-yard touchdown catch from Tefralis back in the first quarter. Now up the middle, Martin doing some damage. Lance Martin powering his way to a first down. Matt Weiner, take it. Pam, Kansas hasn't beaten a top 10 opponent since 1995. Ain't gonna happen today either. Texas comes back from 10 down. Vincent Young. Now let's take a look at what Lance Martin has done. This Lance drive. Martin, number two. He's, he's, a huh? he's a senior. He's just driving, sticking, juking, and jiving. 
that spin move in college football, even professional football, is so beneficial. They just turn and it loosens up the defender. There's so much fight in this guy. You talk about people that overachieve. He's made a name for himself today. And he was their leading rusher last year, was Lance Martin, with only 520 rushing yards. 109 of them came in one game against Fresno. And then, as you mentioned, Tyson Thompson came in this year. And Thompson has certainly stolen his thunder and his playing time. But Martin today has been magnificent. 20 carries, 88 yards, and a touchdown. And, Mike, a lot of those yards coming after contact. And after contact, definitely. And that's where a sign of a good running back. Third and five, go right back to the well and Martin, but he is stacked up, but he gets it right in the middle of the field. You know, it's interesting, Pam, they, as they call their last timeout, set in Boise State. I went back and watched that Tulsa game Boise. last night. Tulsa, last Boise State. Timeout. Identical score late in the game, 42-42. <laughs> of all things. Yeah, and Boise State came. It and give credit to the whole team. It took a team effort. You only have 65 scholarships, Pam, and I think everyone is dressed. And there's more people on that sideline now. Fans either sneaking down there or just alums getting back and wanting to be a part of a winning tradition or even a team that's played this team very well. Won 23 straight games in the WAC. Last time they lost in the WAC at Louisiana Tech in 2001. So Jeff Carr in to attempt a 30-yard field goal. First field goal attempt of the game for the senior. And probably the biggest kick of his collegiate career. He knuckleballs it, and it's no good. Is that ball tipped? I think it was blocked. So Carr unable to get it done. And with a minute seven left, Boise State no timeouts and an opportunity to pull another one out. Well, Dave Ryan reported earlier that the sideline on Boise State was pretty much dead issue, just mute. Here's the field goal try. It had to get tipped. That's that same field goal block team, the same formation they ran that fake field goal San Jose State did, but this time it worked in their favor. Gerald Alexander, Alex Guerrero there. That was a low kick anyway. But the block certainly solidified, but it was not going in. So we play on. So Bransky, can he pull out another one? Running away from trouble, but not for long. He is sacked at the 15 by Tony Ficklin, his second of the day. Looks like he turned an ankle. And pulls Zabransky down, but you know, no timeouts for Boise State. You know, San Jose State's defense has responded magnificently today. Zabransky, flag is down, throws it underneath, and it's incomplete for Avery. But a flag was down. 37 seconds left to go in regulation. We got guys on both teams, overachievers, and guys playing hurt. Originally 
Dale Rogers, the quarterback, has a meniscus tear. He played hurt, played with pride, guts. Illegal formation is, on the offense. Penalty is declined. Third down. Now this is indicative, too, of Boise State. If you're sitting there thinking, heck, you got the ball on your own 16, why not sit on it and go for overtime, wait for overtime? But that's not Dan Hawkins' style. He don't wait for anything. No, he's talked to the Buddha man, the Zen man. They got the mojo all year they've had it, the four years he's been there. You know, there's just a tremendous belief in Boise State's team about the strike ability, but San Jose State answered that on the other end with Coach Hill and his beliefs. Third and 14 from the 16. Oh, the ball is dropped again. Lawrence Beatty. And now on fourth down, they got to get rid of it. Larry Collins saying, nope. Kyle Stringer in. He has had two punt attempts. The first one was blocked. The second one was 72 yards and a career long. For San Jose, you put the, the go ahead and go for it right now. The time I wouldn't even put Lance Martin back to return a punt. They have Casey Miranda back. Oh, the snap. Great job by Stringer just to gather it in. And he gets a good roll. Wow, Mike Dominguez is the snapper, and he only he almost snapped that one over, over his head. So San Jose State still has one timeout left there on the 35-yard line with 19 seconds left to go in regulation. One thing you've seen most of the morning and early afternoon is Boise State bringing eight, nine people up and playing with no coverage help behind them. I don't suspect they'll do the same thing here. They'll have safeties over the top. I'm looking at 35 yards of field they need to cover and need for an opportunity to even kick a game-winning field goal again. Rufus Skillern has been the guy. Eight catches for 152 yards and a touchdown. He is number 80. Split out to the left. Caprales looking for him all the way and he throws it away. Gerald Alexander was there on the coverage. You know, Boise State's walkthrough yesterday, Pam, we were talking about, you know, the last play of the game, that Big Ben formation, the Hail Mary throw. And talk about different variations that you can go to in a situation like this. Let's see if San Jose State comes up with something creative to get the ball downfield. And always, they always wait till the latter part of the game, you know, those Hail Mary throws. If you do them early in the game, you wouldn't be in this situation. San Jose has had two huge pass plays, a 69-yard touchdown to Tyson Thompson, a 79-yarder to Skillern. They need one more. Oh, but going down hard, Alex Guerrero on top of Tefralis. And now third and 10 with 10 ticks left. Well, Fitzhill smart on this call from the sideline, third down. He might just want to run the football and play for overtime because they're getting a lot of pressure with just a three-man rush and defending with eight. But all the alums from both teams, the, the Bergs and the Garcias and the Von Ohoffens for Boise State are pulling up a seat. Waiting to see if this top team is going to get upset. Yeah, they'll take a knee here. And some boos. And other comments coming from the crowd right in front of us who uh, don't quite agree with that call. But as you uh, surmise, Mike, they are going to go and uh, play for overtime. Unbelievable. We are going to overtime. San Jose and Boise tied up at 42 apiece. We'll be back. Overtime is about to begin between Boise State and San Jose State. An unbelievable afternoon. Overtime about to commence between these two teams. Boise State beat San Jose last year, 77 to 14 in Idaho. And now we are going to overtime. What a difference a year makes in a program that's two and six, San Jose State. They've been in some ball games this year, but they haven't been able to finish. They fought hard for 60 minutes. And Boise State just hoping they can get out of here with a victory. 
the captains go to the middle of the field for the coin toss. Offense, defense, or defend the goal. You gotta win the call. You call in heads. It is heads. You want to play defense. Which end do you want to play on? Well, we want to play on this end, go that way, sir. San Jose is on offense at that end of the field. Well, let's take a look at the overtime rules. So you just saw the coin toss. Each team gets a possession from the 25-yard line per overtime. There's no game clock, but the play clock is in effect. And once you start with a third overtime, you have to go for two after a touchdown. Much fairer overtime than you see in the National Football League. And I don't think many people here believe that we will be looking at overtime between these two teams. Again, if you're just joining us, Boise State is a powerhouse, 8-0 on the season. They've won 19 straight games overall, best of any active team in Division 1A, and they were a 33-point favorite to just take Fitz Hill's team and eviscerate them today, and that has not happened. It's not happened by any stretch of the imagination. And We talked about having early morning breakfast out here, a couple pots of coffee. Now we're going to overtime. Past lunchtime now. What can we ask for now? A little appetizer. Something to tide us over before dinner. Game is now approaching four hours in length. San Jose gets the ball first. Little play fake to Fralis, who was taken over at quarterback for Dale Rogers playing uh, most of the fourth quarter. Chris Barrios coming in to make the stop on first down. Again, there's no play clock, so don't even think about that, but you still have the, the same 25 seconds to get the to get the playoff. No game clock is in effect. The one thing they're trying to do in a sequence, you get your best half dozen, 10 plays that you run just on the fringe of the red zone. And you rep them in practice, so when you get in a situation like this, you know what to expect on both sides of the football. Second and eight. Fallis with time. But where does he go? Find Skiller, who has been the prime target. Skiller now with nine catches as he continues to build on his career high day. Nine catches for 159 yards and a touchdown. Well, if you're just joining us, the first 60 minutes, number 80 is put on a show for us. And so is number two, Lance Martin has emerged as a top running back for San Jose State. Stillman just a junior, now third and one. Try to keep this drive alive. They go back to Martin, and Lance Martin breaks it in for the touchdown. San Jose State goes on top in the overtime. We talked about before, Pam, when you get nine, ten guys in the line of scrimmage for Boise State, they're expecting option play, but Lance Martin, we just addressed it, once he gets, breaks the line of scrimmage, there's nobody back there. He's been running through tackles for the last 30 minutes of the second half. And in case you're wondering, Tyson Thompson, there's nothing physically wrong with him. They've just been going with the hot hand, going with the backup in Lance Martin, who scores the touchdown. He now has 106 yards on the ground at two touchdowns. He just shows me he's got great leg strength. Those hips and that lower back and the rear end, just driving forward for the touchdown. Jeff Carr for the extra point. And San Jose State, first possession of the overtime. They take it in for a touchdown. Now it's up to Boise to counter, or, race, or else they will lose for the first time in 20 games. Look at the boys. They're getting dirty. They're working overtime down here. Oben, that left tackle, just throws people around. I tell you what. That Lance Martin, but give credit to the offensive line. Just going that extra yard to allow your running back to get in the end zone. 447 yards now of total offense for San Jose. Martin's 106 yards is three off his career high that he had last season. But right now, it's up to the defense. Handoff to Marks. And he is stopped quickly by Kenji Green. Fitz Hill trying to come up with his biggest win of his four-year tenure at San Jose State. Came here on blind faith. He took the job without ever visiting 
the campus. That's amazing. He was an assistant at Arkansas. You could say that again. He took this job on blind faith. And before I do something, Pam, I, I certainly want to see things. But he's got great faith in the Lord, and he trusted that he was in the right spot for the right time. And he impressed us yesterday tremendously. Second and nine. And that play is a no-go because Quentin Jones left his position early. Delay a game on the offense. Now, they get a delay, but they could have gotten Jones because he might have been looking at the uh, play clock. Well, everyone's doing it. <laughs> you know, this isn't something new for Keith Burns. He's been doing it all afternoon. He talked about sweating off some calories. And he, well, he was, he was a fun guy to visit, too. He talked and talked and just all pumped up. Ooh, excited about playing boys and State. Yeah. And he was right. Pressure coming. He zips it and completes it for the first down to Dryzen James. So a second and 14, James's third catch. Well, Dryzen James gets inside defender when there's no free safety help. Somebody in the middle of the field. Once James gets inside, he's got no one in there to defend the pass, but great blitz protection by the offense. And four catches for 73 yards. Pitch back to Marks. Finds a seam, and he's headed towards the end zone. And Boise State has countered. Not only did Boise State counter, they counter with some authority. After the penalty, the second and long, but they, they're able to convert on that play and then come right back here with Marks. It's a traditional toss sweep play to the right. Student body right. Marks knows where the end zone is. So is that right side of the offense. 130 yards on the ground, a new career high for Marks. Extra point. And we're headed towards the second overtime as Tyler Jones knocks it through. So San Jose State scores, Boise State scores. Of course, we're gonna play a second overtime. Marks' first touchdown of the season is a huge one. It means we have a second OT in Northern California. Dependability and strength. The brokers of... We're in. Hey, join the evolution. Okay, we're out. Nothing beats the power of the eagle. What if business no longer meant business travel? Microsoft Office Live Meeting. The service that lets you be in different places, but still on the same page. See for yourself with a free trial. All it takes is a phone, PC, and an internet connection. And you can collaborate with groups of all sizes. It's like being at the same table, even if you're worlds apart. Visit Microsoft.com slash meet now or call us today. Protet is coming your way when things wrap up out at San Jose State. Lindsey Davenport and Serena Williams in the WTA Tour Championship right after football. Might be a while before we get to tennis because we are now going to the second overtime in this game. It started exactly four hours ago now. Boise State. Hanging on to that 19-game winning streak by the skin of their teeth. Lee Marks with a 16-yard touchdown run. Lance Martin had a 16-yard touchdown run to break San Jose out on top in the first overtime. You know, Pam, this is just down to want to. You know, he worked so hard for 60 minutes, and what kind of fight you got left in you? I know Boise State's coming out here to take the ball in the second overtime. They have guys up front that believe in themselves, and there's another opportunity for them. So they reverse and go towards the end zone now to our left. And Boise does have the ball first. I want the play clock on or off. 
reset it up to 25 seconds. And now we're ready to go. Again, no game clock in overtime, but the play clock is in effect. Still at 25 seconds between plays. Marks the touchdown score. Breaks a tackle. And then is scooched out of bounds around the 20-yard line. He picks up five. Josh Powell. Powell now double digits in tackles. He also has a sack. What a game. I think maybe keep him at the strong safety spot, Michael. I think it's safe to say that. I think Coach Burns wanted to do that earlier in the season, but he just couldn't find somebody to take his spot in the secondary. And he said, what do we have to lose? Get 33 close to the line of scrimmage. But offensively for Boise State, Lee Marks got the nice wiggle. You might see a steady diet of tall sweeps with him. Over 900 yards in combined total offense between these two teams today. Zabranski decides to keep it and gets the first down. Nine yards for him. Jamonte Cox makes the tackle. Coming up next, we will get you to tennis, the WTA Tour Championships at uh, Round Robin. Serena and Serena Williams and Lindsey Davenport going to play in that one. Good match between two fine American players. Coming up next. Is that here in the state of California? I believe it is. Staples Center. Maybe we can go watch the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, watching the end of it, I mean, Coach Burns gets me fired up. <laughs> He's defense corner for San Jose State. And, but back to that last play that Jared Zabransky. He's determined when he runs that option. He just finds a crease and just tucks it back up inside. And they got two plays they're probably going to run. That tall sweep again, or the option play, has been very effective for him. Marks gets it, and he is tackled down almost immediately. San Jose defense, Eric Wilson in on the stop. This uh, San Jose defense, much maligned. They gave up, given up about 40 points a game, dead last in the whack, and, you know, just miserable. And then Keith Burns coming in, really trying to, trying to turn things around. And the officials are concerned about the play clock being on in only one side of the field right now, so they Trying to get that all straightened out. We gotta give the defense the advantage to look at the play clock because you can time their blitzes up. If the clock's winding down, you can time your blitz because they know they have to snap the football. So second and nine from the ten. We're in our second overtime. And there's that toss to Marks who cuts it back inside and is tackled down after picking about picking up about five yards. Preston George makes the stop. We can see some strategy going here. Boise State sends in their posse of receivers. Good substitution for them. Big third down play for San Jose State to stop and, and force their hand, either field goal attempt or go for it on fourth down. But the way they're running the football here, Pam, I know they're not going to run unless they go quarterback draw because they have everyone deployed to the outside. Yep, they go empty backfield with Zabransky, who has five receivers at his disposal. Tight end in motion, stays in the blocks. Zabransky hit, keeps his feet, and gets close to the first down. Great effort by Zabransky. Depends which mark they use from which sideline. But that second effort by Zabransky has been thrown around a lot today. They did get it. 14 carries for 26 yards and a touchdown for Zabransky. You can see his face. He's felt some pain today. First year starter, has responded extremely well throughout the year. Just a starter coming in on the heels of Ryan Dinwiddie, who was only the most efficient passer in the history of Division 1A since they started measuring that. Grew up on a potato farm in Oregon. So kind of fitting, I guess, that he would go to school in Idaho as he does get the first down. Barely recruited out of high school because he ran the old wing tee. And there are, there's just so many hidden gems out there. And, and schools like Boise State really thrive on finding these guys. They certainly do. And once they get them, they develop them. Not only as athletes, but as scholar athletes, student athletes, and individuals. You know, and all college coaches are just teachers, extended teachers on the, in the arena. First and goal from the one. And that's an easy touchdown for Helmendaler, his third of the game. The freshman from Eagle, Idaho, sashays into the end zone, and Boise takes the lead. Well, here's their goal line bruiser, 
Just come straight ahead like a wrecking ball. No one even touched him. He didn't have to be much of a wrecking ball that time, as you mentioned, as uh, he just went on in. Now Tyler Jones to give Boise the lead. So we've had three possessions in the overtime as a flag goes down. Everybody has scored a touchdown so far, but San Jose State has a chance to counter. They need a touchdown to keep this thing going. Well, this penalty is going to be interesting. Running into the kicker, penalty is declined. Goal is good. Okay. Yeah, just running into, Let's not go. rushing the kicker. So. Let's go. Here's the TD again, Helmand Dollar. Well, that was a monstrous hole. A monstrous hole because you had some guys paving the way. College on the left side, and you got your guard pulling around the old power row. This guy's had a nice afternoon. Number 33 for three TDs today. He reminds me of a guy named Merrill Hodge, who wore that number so proudly. Idaho native. He went to Idaho State, though. I don't know if he ran that well. I don't think Merrill Hodge <laughs> runs not. as well as this guy, but I'm sure I'll get a call this week from him. But the numbers look, look alike. Yep. Helman Dollar with those five carries, three of them for touchdowns. So here comes San Jose State. Got to score a touchdown to keep this game going. Well, we're over 100 points, Pam. That was our goal today, right? <laughs> <laughs> we're over 1,000 yards offense, over 100 points. Four hours, four hours and 10 heck? minutes and counting. A beautiful day in Northern California. Fallis, the quarterback. Plenty of time still left on the, on the play clock. Lance Martin, nice hole. And, well, he hits the hole quickly. Picks up about eight or nine yards on first down. Cam Hall making the stop. And Martin has really, uh, really come on here in the fourth quarter and the overtime periods and saying, hey, give me the ball. Not just Tyson Thompson. This guy's proven that he's a good little running back. Certainly is. And you talk about running backs getting small when they hit the line of scrimmage. This guy just makes a hole and darts through there and gets eight yards in a little burst. Well, Thompson comes in for him because when he came out, Martin was favoring his right arm and continues to do so as he stands on the sideline. So Thompson is fresh. Second and two, and a timeout is taken by San Jose. A smart timeout. Confusion. San Jose. And they got to score a touchdown and then uh, get the extra point to keep this thing going. And a reminder, we have some great tennis coming your way. It has not started yet. The match between Serena Williams and Lindsay Davenport, the WA Tour, WTA Tour Championships, going on a couple hundred miles or so south of us in Los Angeles. But right now, why would you want to go anywhere else? There's nothing like overtime, I think, in college football. And we got double overtime. I think we have all those tennis fans that are huge Boise State and San Jose <laughs> State fans. And Lindsay Davenport, I don't know where she went to college, but I'm sure she enjoys the sport. Great football game as Boise is trying to keep that 19-game winning streak alive. And season's winding down for everybody. Boise State, 8-0, 5-0 in the WAC, 8-0 overall. They have Louisiana Tech next week, and then they play at Nevada on November 27th to close out their season. When does, when does fatigue settle in for these guys? Tomorrow? I mean, everyone's looking for an opportunity to win this game, and hard-fought game by San Jose State staying in it against a formidable opponent in Boise State. Just look at their faces. And you have to wonder, too, how much sleep they got anyway, because these guys had 5 a.m. wake-up calls local time, and a lot of butterflies, you know that, Mike, the night before game, and now they're just they're running on adrenaline. Second and two from the 17. San Jose down seven in the second overtime. And again for Fallis, comes up. Keeps it, pulls, and gets the first down. Fallis taken down by Chris Berrios. And again, those of you who are football fans, you kind of expect this from the WAC. The WAC has, you know, crazy, wacky games, lots of high scoring, and we're getting that in this game, a very improbable showing by San Jose State. Huge underdogs today. 
and they are giving Boise State all they can handle and a little bit more. Boise won last year 77 to 14 over San Jose. And now we're in our second overtime. Lance Martin, again, trying to dance away from trouble, but this time he cannot do it as Alex Guerrero wraps him up. You know, it's interesting, Pam. We've had guys step up on both sides of the ball, role players, but remember, it was sometime in the third quarter, or fourth, actually fourth quarter, where Corey Hall, number 25, was ejected out of the game for some extracurricular activities. And, you know, he's a leader on that defense that's missed right in the middle, but they've had guys step in for him. Was Hall thrown out for kicking at a player in the pile. Second and goal. Or, excuse me, second down. And that one is caught, is it, by Skiller? Wow. Took it right off of the grass, did Skiller. Pam, he's putting on a clinic. Any young receivers at home or even some of you professional receivers sitting at home watching this game, that is a clinic. Wow. There's a few professional scouts up here in the press box for this game. I'm sure the Skillers open up their eyes a little bit. Building on those career highs. And it is third and goal now from the four. Casales fakes the pitch and holds on to it. And goes backwards. So it's coming down to one play for the Spartans. Guerrero with the tackle as he chose to hold on to it rather than pitch to Martin. Well, that's one time that Boise State's done a nice job in the option. You string it out as long as you can. Tight formation like that, a tight formation set like that gives the advantage to the defense. And after four hours and then some, Pam, it comes down to one opportunity. About four hours and 15 minutes into this ball game that started at 9.02 local time. Fourth and goal from the five. Here's your ball game. To Fralis, retreating. Trying to make a play, and he won't. And Boise State survives. Gabe Franklin forcing him out of bounds. And there's, I think, not even a lot of jubilation on that Boise State sideline. More relief, certainly, than anything else. Well, I would question why number 80 wasn't on the field. Skillern's been your guy all afternoon. You only have one receiver in that route. But give credit to both teams. They played one heck of a game. It was wonderful to watch these young athletes go at it. That was a fake option in the line of scrimmage they ran earlier that was an incomplete pass. Well defended. You only got two receivers in the route. No chance to success in that play. Adams doing what he's told, but stay alive. At least try to throw the ball in the end zone. Give your team a chance. And a young quarterback like that will sure learn from this situation. And Fitz Hill, so close. Remember, there was a field goal towards the end of regulation. Jeff Carr hit the upright, or, or, or excuse me, had it blocked by Boise State. And Boise State survives, keeping their win streak alive. It is now up to 20 in a row. Boise State wins it in two overtimes. Coming up next, the 2004 WTA Tennis Championships. Lindsey Davenport taking on. Clemens back. Lucky to get it back. That could very well have been picked off by Matt Clark. It was intended for Weatherspoon, but uh, Kyle never had a chance to catch it. It was just a question of whether or not Matt could catch it. And it's great reaction by Matt Clark reading this hook route, breaking on the ball, not making contact. Clean play by Matt Clark and almost an interception for the Bruins. Second down and 10 from the 35 yard line for the Oregon Ducks. That was a late delivery because that receiver was, was available earlier. He'll run it. This is Whitehead picking his way. Well, he picked his way for a first down to about the 48-yard line, and Jared Page kept him from roosting in the end zone. So we played a quarter here at uh, Autzen Stadium. We've got a 14-7 uh, UCLA lead.
over the Oregon Ducks. Back after this message and the word from our ABC station. Every great story starts with a great adventure. Introducing the all-new Nissan Pathfinder with a 270 horsepower engine, three-row seating for seven, GPS navigation and DVD entertainment, and more off-road capability. Has time to go deep. Got a man down there. Too long. Garen Strong could not run it down. So it'll be incomplete. Second down 10. Here's Todd. Well, Keith and Dan, bad news for the Oregon Ducks. Tight end Keith Tim Day, excuse me, Tim Day has done for the rest of this game. That ankle injury has been re-aggravated, and he's got a big ice pack sitting on there. Ironically, he's sitting next to Demetrius Williams, you see right there on the left-hand side, who did not even dress for the day, so they are down two of their top receivers. Keith. Oh, do I detect the sound of a cold? Absolutely. Oh, my goodness. Second down and ten. Whoa. That's a pretty good lick put on Whitehead by Brigham Harwell. So one of those freshman defensive tackle gets to lay a lick on the top running back for the Oregon Ducks and it'll be third down nine now and uh, the Bruin defense handling Oregon for the moment. Well that was a big question coming into this game which Bruin defense would show up the one that shut out Stanford 21 nothing a couple weeks back or the one that looked so bad the first half last week against Washington State. Whitehead's a good receiver. He goes outside. He throws the ball deep to the outside, and it is incomplete, intended for Maxwell. And Emmanuel defended, and so it's fourth down, and once again, the Oregon Ducks are going to have to kick it away. This is five straight incompletions now for Kellen Clemens because of good pass coverage by the Bruins. Ben Emanuel with the play on the ball that time. Craig Bragg goes back under it. Craig standing at about the 12. Dittman, David Dittman. Low snap, gets it off. That's going to go to the end zone. 